Yeah. <clears throat> Recording in progress. Wait, everywhere you go, she. Hi, good morning all. How are we doing today? Good morning, all is well in the side. How are you? Hi. I'm fine, thank you. I'm thank I'm good. Welcome to introduction to any money laundering and compliance systems. I am your lecturer. I'm Miss Bullard. I've been with the Institute for the past six years. Um, I teach the ICA program, which is the International Compliance Association program. Um, I also teach intermediate and introduction to compliance systems, as well as supervisory skills and customer service and marketing. 
okay? And so this class is a discussion-based class. So what I will do is allow everybody to introduce themselves because of course, we know we live in a world where networking is very important. And so therefore, by the end of our five weeks, we hope that we will know all everybody, um, everybody will be in the same network and we'll work together to assist each other. Okay, um, I would have sent an email with some attachments. Um, can everybody confirm that they received a welcome note? Everybody would have gotten the link. I, I see that you're on, so very good. But I sent a, a welcome note with three attachments. Can we confirm that we received that? Yes. I received one. Yes, I received it. Okay, received. Very, very good. Hi, I, yes, I, I received that. Okay, excellent, excellent. So I know there's some confusion about the time because your book may say 10 o'clock and um, I sent the message saying 9.30. So um, I just wanna confirm if the 9.30 time is good for most or a person's expecting to start at 10. Adrian Sorry. Wallace, you feel free just to talk back to Ms. Bullet. Uh, excuse me. Sorry? It's all right with me. It's all right? Up to yeah. 9.30, I guess you can just raise your hands. Since everybody's still timid at the moment, just raise your hand and let me know um, if there's an issue between the 9.30 and 10.30 time. Okay, and you can put something in the chat and let me know. That, um, you know, we can just extend, it'll either be 9.30, well, because there is a 30 minute break, and persons normally vote that they want their break at the end. Or if we need to take the break halfway through, um, again, majority rules with whether you want to take the break halfway through, we're going to end up 12. So if we start at 10, then that means we'll end up 1. So it really, really depends on the class. Okay, so just in case some persons are planning to. Join again. We'll use this time just for everybody. Introduce yourself and let us know why you're here and your expectations. And if you want to tell us um, where in the financial services sector you work, um, that would be interesting as well. Okay. And so, like I said, I'm Miss Bullard. I've been with the institute for the past six years, and this is a three-tier program that we're teaching. It. This is just the beginning. It's five weeks of introduction to anti money laundering and compliance then the next step is the intermediate section that's 10 weeks and then there's the international compliance association diploma it's nine months of anti-money laundering and nine months of compliance risk and governance okay so at the end of this five weeks you should know if you want to go any further okay to start um, they're on a journey with Miss Bullet, okay, till the end. So hopefully, um, I see 22 persons here. Can somebody um, mute their mic? I think the merit, we're getting a lot of background noise. Okay, my bad, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, just mute your mics until you speak, please. Yeah, so um, yes, like I said, it's a journey, right? Mm -hmm. and it can take up mm -hmm. to three years, but it, it's definitely a rewarding and a achievable journey, okay? But what I ask that each person do is take some time and determine after this five weeks, can I stomach hearing from Ms. Bullet any longer? Um, is this too complex? Do I wanna go any further? Am I still motivated, okay? Or is compliance um, the subject for me, okay? This five weeks, it would, will, would be compared to the annual training that you get um, at your institutions. Because again, training is mandatory once you work in the financial services sector. So don't feel like you're gonna do this five weeks and it's gonna be a waste of time. At the end of the five weeks, you can get a, you will get a certificate and then you can decide whether or not you wanna go on the journey with Ms. Bullard. If you don't continue on, I would just recommend that you find whether it's credit or HR or um, finance that you're interested in and you, and you continue in your career development. Okay, uh, are there any questions before we start? 
No, no questions so far. Okay, so just in case some persons are gonna join at 10, um, um, let's take some time, let's just introduce ourselves. So the first person I see is Natasha Curtis. Um, please introduce yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can. Good morning, everyone. My name is Natasha Curtis, and um, I'm employed at Caribbean Borderland Company, aka Coca Cola, in the accounts department as accounts payables. Uh, I joined this uh, class as a way of making a change in my life in terms of um, coming out of that sector to go back into the financial sector because I used to work at RBC uh, a few years ago. So I feel like this is a challenge for me coming from the manufacturing retail sector to now going back, trying to get myself back into, you know, the, um, I call it business sector, I, I, I could say. So this is like a new thing for me and um, I haven't been in school for a while. So it's a challenge. Okay, well, Natasha, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And, and don't worry, by the end of these five weeks, we're going to be family. Um, we're going to we have support groups, and we're going to ensure that everybody is successful. So have no fear. A lot of us need a refresher. Okay, have no fear, but we, we, we can do this. Okay, so hang in there. Okay, thank you. All right, great. Adrian Wallace. Um, morning. My um, name is Adrian Wallace. Uh, 28, and I did the cost to uh, further my education. Okay. okay, so are you in the financial services sector now, Adrian? Oh, no, ma'am. No? Okay, well, join hands with the see, Natasha, right off the bat, you have company, you have somebody to work with you, and we're going to find you some mentors in this class who've been in the financial services sector for 20 years, right? They have a wealth wow. of knowledge, so we'll all work together. So no yeah. fear. Okay, Adrian, great. I like to see, normally I have a class full of women. So it's 24 of you. I was like, Lord, please don't let it be 24 women. So Adrian, we, we are gonna do this, okay? So welcome. All right. Okay. Mr. Merritt, I can't pronounce your first name and people just get offended. Ah, uh, you. Yes. Okay, that's a little cloudy. I think you probably too close or something. To yeah, me. sorry. So me too, I'm actually trying to enter the financial field as well. So that's my first time. Oh, wow. Just trying to do something new as well. Okay, okay, you're welcome. Thank welcome you. Welcome, and, and, and no fear, because I see some familiar faces. <laughs> and I'm certain we are all going to help each other. Okay? Yeah. So, and I, I don't want you to think that um, compliance is just a bad the financial services sector, because in the Bahamas, the financial services sector is made up of the bank, it's made up that is governed by central bank, the securities businesses, which are the like the broker dealers and the traders, that's governed by the Securities Commission, the web shops and our two casinos, Bahama and Atlantis, which is governed by the gaming board. Uh, just recently, real estate companies law firms and accounting firms that have a corporate service providers arm, meaning they provide financial services to their clients. And so they are governed by the Compliance Commission. And then of course, insurance that is governed by the Insurance Commission. So that's the bank, the web shop, the casinos, insurance, lawyers, accountants. And who, who else did I miss? and the securities business, okay? That's the financial services sector. But I, I want you all to think about uh, last semester, I had two persons from the pharmaceutical um, company saying that they have to ensure that the pharmacy industry is compliant. So I don't know if you all know those uh, African friends who give us those prescriptions without a prescription. So they came to make clamp down on that. So they came to learn about compliance so they could control that industry. And then of course, there's a lot of talk about marijuana. So we have a lot of persons from the Ministry of Agriculture in saying that we, when this marijuana um, business is approved, we have to make sure that they stay compliant. So we had people from agriculture. 
Um, what was the next difference? Let me see. Oh, and then I don't know if y'all remember um, a few years ago or last year sometime, the gas line in, was hacked by the Russians. So we had people from oil and gas showing up and saying, we have to make sure that, you know, our little gas line in the Bahamas and our gas businesses are not hacked. So have no fear, compliance, you know, applies to most businesses. Okay, and this class will be applicable. So so welcome, Mr. Merritt. Um, Ms. Roll, Marion Roll. Again, again, some music feedback. We, we, we could dance at the end of the class, but not right now. Can, can you unmute your mics, please? No, no, let me, let me see if I can mute them for you then. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Roll. Good morning. Um, I, my name is Marion Roll, obviously. Um, I currently work at Fidelity Bank. Um, I joined the course to see if this could be a possible career path for me. I touched on compliance in one of my former jobs um, when I worked at the insurance company. So I just wanna try it again and see if I could further go down this road. Okay, okay, Marion, welcome, welcome. And see guys, we already have somebody in the, the bank being a bombarda yet, but she 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 looked like she can be one of our mentors. So so very good, Miss Rose. Um, thank you for joining us, joining us. And what I hope by the end of all these introductions with my classes is found um that has been beneficial is that they create a WhatsApp support group and, and they share um, I guess information articles. But of course, you have to read the newspaper every week as compliance professionals. And so um, if anybody is interested in being the host or the administrator of the WhatsApp group, please please let me know after the introduction. So you can just put up your hand and, and that would greatly assist. And this is, you have 24 persons, so I, I'm sure at least a few of y'all would not mind putting that WhatsApp group together, okay? Damien Forbes. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Diana Forbes um, from the Gaming Board in Freeport. I'm a part of the Compliance Department and I'm now starting my compliance certification. That's why I start um, joining the club. Okay, ex excellent. You're in the right place, Ms. Forbes, right yeah. place. So thank you for joining us and welcome. Okay, yes. um, Nashan King. Sorry about the feedback. No, My no name is Nashan King. Um, I took this course as a supplement to my criminal justice degree. Um, just like Ms. Roll, I am exploring new options and career paths, um, seeing that I initially wanted to pursue law, but I, I have a, a slight change of heart at the moment. So I'm just dabbling into other things to see what piques my interest. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, um, Trevor Molly. Is Trevor there? Good morning, Trevor. How are you today? How you doing? I'm uh, great. Name, yeah, my name is Trevor Molly. Uh, I work at Doctors Hospital um, as a medical coder in the Health Information Department. Um, I took this course to challenge myself and to see if I would be interested in choosing a new career path. Okay, excellent, excellent, and welcome in, and thank you for choosing us, and yeah. and we'll ensure that you're not disappointed. Thank okay? you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Trevor Alfonso Nuri. Good morning. Morning. Yeah, I chose this uh, course really and truly just to pretty up my resume. Um, I work at Central Bank, uh, so I'm currently in the financial sector and just trying to, you know, expand my wealth and knowledge and grow. Okay, excellent. We're glad that you're here and we need good connects, so we're happy 
central bank is the regulator for banks. So we, we need to know the right people. We need to have the right people in our network. So, so very good, Trevor. I'm sorry, Alfonso. So thank you so much. Um, Shanice Rowell. Good morning, everyone. Good I morning. Hi. Y'all can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I currently work at Equity Bank. I'm in the accounts department, um, accounts receivables and accounts payables. And I took this course because um, I actually always had an interest in an interest in compliance, especially from doing the AML training that we have to do every year. So yeah, I, I want to see if this is something I can go into as a career change. So that's so why I took the class. Okay. And you're like I said, you're in the right place. Um, this class definitely helps you decide whether you want to go further or not. It's it's five weeks. So before you blink, it's over. But compliance is a very complex area of the financial services sector. It's not for everyone. You have to read. And, and persons say, well, Ms. Bullard, everybody reads. No, most persons do not read. They have a problem reading and they have a problem comprehending and then applying. So, you know, like operations have, have been around since, you know, Royal Bank says I'm 108 years old. So the operations department was there, the finance department was there, HR was there 108 years ago. Compliance is just 22 years old. Okay, compliance was just born in, in, in 2000 in the Bahamas. And so there's no manual to follow. There are policies and procedures and there is law, but you have to read, you have to do research, and then you have to make a decision, okay? And so a lot of persons find it very, very, like I say, hard to read and then hard to make decisions, okay? So by the end of this course, all of us will determine if this is for us or not. Okay, so so very good. Um, Rodney Bain. Hi, so I'm Rodney Bain. I have a background in education. I worked in operations at a locally commercial, resident commercial bank. I worked in operations at an insurance company, and I'm currently in the regulation for insurance. Uh, we work at the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas. I have oversight of a portfolio in intermediaries. That's the agents and brokers and sales persons and adjusters. How we got to this course, one of the things we're trying to lock down is our AML CFT side of our job. So I'm looking forward to getting more information to further strengthen my competencies at work. Okay, excellent, Rodney, and I'd be happy to have you in our network as well. And you said you, um, in terms of education, you're trying to lock down compliance? Yes, the, I, oh. did, I did compliance because at the bank, one okay. of my duties were to, to KYC is I had to sign off on new account forms. So I doubled in compliance there, no okay. account openings, and then you appreciate the FATF and a different stuff with that. And we had a tad touch of that at the insurance company, but for okay. sure more, you see more in regulation, the impacts of FATF and other stuff like that, so. Okay, but you are in the financial services yeah. sector now? Correct, yeah, I'm, I work at the insurance okay. commission. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Okay, I thought you were saying in education, that's, I was a little bit confused, okay. Sure, I started off as a teacher, <laughs> then yeah. going to the bank, to go to the insurance company, now I'm okay. at the insurance commission. Yes. Okay, okay, great. Okay, Nikita Cooper. Is Nikita there? Yeah. Hi, good morning. Morning. Um, I'm Nikita Cooper. I work at the Human Board, presently in um, the Compliance Department. Okay, excellent. A few of you all here from the Gaming Board. So good that we you know, have so many people in one office that can network and work together. So, so welcome, Nikita. Um, Good morning. My name is Tequila Fox, and I work in the corporate services at a corporate services company in the investments department. 
well, I took up the course um, during my time in university where I studied accounting, fraud and ethics and accounting was some of my favorite courses. So I thought this would be a good course to take up to um, put my resume and also explore as a career path. Okay, excellent, um, Ms. Forbes and welcome. Eddie Norales. Yes, good morning, everyone. Morning. My name is Eddie Noelis, and I'm a tax consultant at De Deloitte & Touche. Um, having joined the firm early this year, I decided, um, uh, just like how another person mentioned, I tried to expand my resume. And so I decided to take this course um, just pretty much to get more information, but also to hopefully see if this is an area that I would like to um, further explore. And like I said, AML affects pretty much um, a lot of different um, entities and being at an accounting firm that 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 is an area that also affects us as well too. So hopefully um, at the end of this course, I'm hoping that whatever knowledge that I gain from here, I can be able to apply that um, to my area. And, and I'm, like I said, I'm looking forward to the networking opportunities and as well as further um, going further into the other um, probably intermediary and uh, the, the, the other levels of this um, offering of this course. Okay, excellent, Eddie. And I'm looking forward. It sounds like a lot of y'all will be on this journey with Ms. Bullitt. So I'm excited already. Okay, so very good. Um, Anika, you went already, all right? You introduced yourself, Anika, already? Or was I speaking to you? Okay, no, not Anika, sorry, wrong name, sorry. Um, Kalia Solomon. Good morning, everybody. Um, I currently work in the financial services industry as I have since I graduated college, um, started off in securities, worked at a brokerage firm, um, now I'm at the Central Bank and I decided to do this AML course to further my knowledge on compliance as I um, try to make a transition into another department at the bank. Okay, excellent, Khalil. And like I said, I'm excited about um, all the men that are in this class today because you know what, we women, we talk too much and Miss Bullet is long-winded, so I'm glad that y'all are here to wheel us back in when we, we, we go south. So very good, Khalil, and, and, and welcome. Look, is it, look, now I'm talking to some people on the chat, so I may, okay, yes. Danielle Roberts. Good morning. My name is Danielle Roberts. I work at the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas, so just like Mr. Rodney Bain. I actually work in the intermediaries and market conduct department. Um, <clears throat> my sole, my sole portfolio there is uh, salespersons. I took this AML um, course so that I can further my job and okay. know how I can better put things in place to make sure that we are being compliant. Okay, excellent and. Daniel, like uh, I think it was Eddie that said, you know, compliance is so widespread, no matter where in the financial services sector you work, it, this is going to be applicable. So I don't want everybody to say this is a, is a waste of time. Okay. All right. Okay. So welcome. Um, somebody is asking if it's okay for, for you to record. Um, you may, um, Miguel is our IT person. He records all the sessions and it takes him about two days to upload to a website. And so when you get the next link, he will give you directions on where to find the record. Okay, so all the recordings are recorded and he will lead you to how to access them. But if you wanna record separately, um, yeah, just speak to Miguel. I, you know, cause he's the IT person. Okay, um, Antonia Nordich. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Antonia Nottage. Presently, I work in the financial services sector in, um, in a compliance department. So I'm here to start my certifications and training, and it's my goal to go all the way to the ICA. Very good, very good, Nottage. So now we're going to tell you, okay, you're definitely on this journey, and everybody, you said that yes, they, um, they on the uh, compliance um, 
you know, they're in the compliance department, you all make this work because you're all here to the end. You can't be in this compliance department if you're not certified. My regulators, you cannot regulate if you're not certified. So please, I hope this is the area for you because all us could be together for the next three years. I, I see it already. Okay, so welcome, welcome. Um, Lakeisha Ferguson. Or oh, I think I spoke, was it Lakeisha? You have to excuse Miss Bullard, yes. Never, sorry, Lakeisha, wrong person. Can you roll? Miss, Miss Bullard? Yes. Uh, Lakeisha Ferguson, Gaming Board. Okay. I work in the compliance department in a technical aspect. I actually am attached to technical compliance at the Gaming Board's Freeport office as an inspector. Um, what I hope this course does for me is, I guess, enlighten me and heighten my knowledge so that I can perform better. Um, technical compliance is actually fairly new at the Gaming Board, but definitely necessary. Um, for our compliance with the law and regulations. So I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and we're happy that you're here and you're definitely in the right place, okay? And you're so right about what you said. Okay, you. Um, can you um, please put, if we're taking a register and we have some acronyms, we need your full government name, please. Whatever in your passport, please write, write cover over your name and click on more and put in your full name so we can take the register. Other than that, you'll be marked absent, okay? So please, um, Bria W. Is Bria there? Good morning. Yes, sorry about that. Um, yes, yeah, so I currently work in, I work technically in education, but still as in a, as a bursar at Mary Star in Freeport. Um, but more recently, while working in the role, I've been more interested in financial and between financial analyzing and audit. And when I did more research, compliance is actually some aspects of both. So I decided to pursue a career in compliance. And of course, I don't really have any experience in compliance other than my short contractual time at Bank of the Bahamas. So the best thing for me to do right now is to just get a head start with the certifications and then hopefully as I'm able to add those to my resume, I will hopefully get into the financial services sector. Okay, so let, let me just tell you um, what makes you an effective compliance officer because you have to make the entire organization compliant is that you start all the way from the bottom and, and, and get to the top. Right, because I agree. Because you will understand the ins and outs. So what, what's always on paper isn't actually what happens in the day to day. So mm -hmm. even if you get in the door on a teller lineup, if you're seriously pursuing this career, yeah. get in the door on the teller lineup. And then if there's a relief pool where you go from desk to desk, because it normally takes about six months to master a function. Mm -hmm. So get, go from desk to desk, learning in that way, when you are auditing or reviewing departments, you would understand their terminology and their language. Right, I, I, I agree 100%. That's yeah. pretty much yeah. my goal right now, just you know, to get in the door and then move up like right. that. Yeah, so because imagine technology now coming on with compliance, you know, the tech department have their own Spanish English mix up. I don't know <laughs> if no, no, no other department understand what, what they speak or say, right? Right. <laughs> right. So, right. You definitely have to spend some time with Lakeisha. So, by the time it's you auditing her, you could say, No, Lakeisha, I know this language. I know right from wrong, right? <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So, very, very good, Bria. Very Thank good. Thank you. Okay, Robin McPhee. Is Robin there? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good I'm morning. Robin McPhee. I'm currently employed at Capital Union Bank in the middle office department. Um, compliance is just the course I choose to take to further my education and to make myself more valuable. Okay, welcome, Robin. And we're uh, definitely in the right place. 
Okay, so I the next person is Deb A, but can you please give me a full name? Or can you hover over your name and change that for us, please? I'm doing it now. Good morning. Okay, morning. What's your name? Debbie Ann. Debbie Ann. Grant. Okay. Sorry? Debbie Ann Grant. I'm typing Grant? it in right okay. now. Grant. Okay, good, good. Okay, while well, you type that in, Forbes, you had a question or is going to take too long, so never mind. That's fine. No, sorry about that. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Grant. Hi, good morning. Hi, I'm an employee of the gaming board for the Bahamas. Um, previously, I worked in banking for close to 20 years, and I have 21 years in um, at the gaming board office. So I um, this is my first time really doing the certification for the AML, but I I mean, I've been out of banking for a number of years. I was, I'm familiar with um, central bank laws, but um, this is new for me. In 2019, I joined the compliance team. So I'm trying to get up to speed with um, compliance. Okay. Um, the regulations. Okay, excellent, excellent. You're in the right place, in the right place. Okay, guys, so good. Um, please take note of the names, um, anybody um, tech, tech savvy and can do this WhatsApp group for us, Ms. Bullet is not going to be in the group. I have like 10 classes, so I can't be in all these groups. But again, it's a support group to network, to work together, to share ideas, and, and to um, my current group now, they just put in the highlights of the newspaper because you have to read the newspaper every day. And so that makes it easier. So. Any, any volunteers um, with the WhatsApp group? Or are y'all even interested in the WhatsApp group or y'all wanna wait till next week? I think get it started. You could get it started? Okay, yeah. good. So if you're interested and there's no pressure, please put your um, number in the chat and, and Nashan has agreed to be that admin. Okay, so. Everybody has found it beneficial. If you're going all the way to the end, you definitely need to be in this group. I am telling you, it, it helps. Okay, so put your names and numbers in the chat and Nishan will organize that group for us. Thank you so much, Nishan. Okay, so good guys um, that we have some names and we have some faces and um, you know, every, every week it's gonna get clearer. We are going to work together. I'm not going to downplay it. It is a lot of work. It's a very comprehensive. It's complex, but it's achievable. Okay. And so if we work together, all of us will be successful. Okay. And so I sent some attachments. I guess we'll go through the attachments and to make sure that everybody's on the same page and then we can have questions. Now, let me let you all know up front. This is a discussion based class. Okay, if you don't talk to Ms. Bullet, if Ms. Bullet don't know you by the end of the five weeks, you don't get participation points. So no question is a dumb question. We all here to learn. And Ms. Bullet here to learn too for like 24, 25 persons and some regulators. I'm looking forward to uh, you know, all the new things that I'm gonna learn as well. So please chime in, um, talk back to me and, and let me know your thoughts and what's happening with UBT. Okay, um, Thurston, go ahead. Good morning, Ms. Bullard. Good morning, everyone. Just want to make sure that you know I'm here. Yeah, I know. I was talking to you in the chat, but you know, I, I Ms. Bullard ain't too technically savvy. So I was okay. answering you and trying to, you know, so you're, you know, old people, just, just work with me. <laughs> Not a problem. I have you on my list. Okay, great. Okay, good. Okay, guys, let's, let's, let's get this roller coaster going. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen. Please let me know that you can see it. We can see it. Okay, great. So I would have sent a welcome message um, with these attachments, central bank guidelines. And again, I most of my career, I worked with Royal Bank for 
16 plus years. So all of Miss Bullet's stories pertaining to Royal Bank. And I was there back in the day when Royal Bank was Royal Bank. Not in the last five years when I don't they they went south. Okay. And so I refer mostly to the central bank guidelines. The central bank is the oldest regulator. And most I find that most of the other regulators, they kind of leverage off a central bank when they're writing policy and procedure. Okay. Ben, if that ain't true. Just work with Miss Bullet right now, right? You see me <laughs> shifting in my seat. I see. I know she don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I feel that you know because they're the oldest, uh, they have had enough practice with getting turning law into policy and, and guidelines. Okay, and so I refer often to the central bank guidelines. This is the ICA assessment handbook, and like like I said, this is a journey. Five weeks of introduction. 10 weeks of intermediate, nine months of anti-money laundering, nine months of governance risk and compliance. And so this is the ICA handbook when you get to that point. And because most of us are going on that journey, I want us now to just look at specific pages in the ICA book. Let me see specifically pages 17 to 20, because when you get the ICA, yeah, there are three essays for anti-money laundering and three essays for governance risk and compliance. And so each essay has to be 3,500 words. That is marked in London. The Brits are very meticulous. They take off 30, 40 points if you do not reference the way they say the way they And so I want you to practice from now to reference using their reference um, standard. And so if you look in that ICA assessment handbook, and again, it's a lot of pages and in compliance, you'll find that documents are hundred pages. You don't want to read a hundred pages and get overwhelmed. You want to go directly to what you need. So 17 to, you go to the table of contents and say, what do I need? I need to find out how to reference right there. Right there. This is what you do and why you do it and how you should cite and word count and all of that. So you go right there and you read that nine. If you have extra time, by all means, read the whole book. If you're good at reading, read the whole book. But if not, please just pay attention to um, these pages and so you can do your homework properly. Now, again, Ms. Mullet is not gonna take 20 and 30% off of your homework because you don't reference properly. But I want you to practice, okay? Is that clear? Yeah, okay. Talk back to me. I need feedback. Yes, yes quite clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. okay, so overall, to pass this class, you have to have 70%. Okay, and let me tell you how easy it is to get to 70%. So I have four questions here that are worth 20% of that 70% grade. Okay, and it says, um, these four questions are past exam questions. So if you're wondering what type of questions are on the exam, these are formal exam questions. And don't be surprised if you see one or two of these again. Okay, so you are to submit, you are to choose a question. Each question has a due date. Now, in the beginning, this is gonna be a little bit muddy, especially for those who don't work in the financial services sector. So I don't always recommend to do question one, even though it's fairly easy. But if you grasp after this class and think you could get a homework in next week, then fine, then do it. I also don't agree that you should do question four. Because if you do question four, that's going to be just before our review just class, when the class is going to end, and you won't get an opportunity to redo if you don't do well. If you do questions two or three, I give you the opportunity to redo if you get below 70%. If you get 70% or more, I don't give you an opportunity to redo. We have some people who say, oh, Ms. Bullet, I have to get 100%. That's too much pressure on yourself, okay? I don't support that. 70% and below, you redo. So a lot of people just wait their question for, find out they don't understand, and then beg and plead. No. Please be proactive and not reactive. Please do question one, two, or three. So from the onset, you can find out 
if me and Miss Bullet speak in the same language. Okay? Don't wait till week four, week five. The same as Bullet. I speak French, you speak Spanish. Okay? So please, I, I, I'm giving you all some pointers. Another very remedial thing is that persons don't understand how hard it is to work and go to school. Get off at five o'clock. You know, some evenings I teach days run the class at six, or even Saturday this year, the first day of rest, you run in the class. No, you should still be trying to rest and re re rejuvenate for next week. A burnout is now a medical condition. You need some help. Okay. This this is gonna be difficult no matter which course you take. Okay, because Ms. Bullet talks a lot, there's a lot of information, and then you have to retain it. So please get your little niece or nephew. Oh, let them keep the children, play with them, cook, clean, whatever you need to do. So you will have enough time for your brain to be clear and for you to retain this. Please, no baby is sitting on the lap, no cooking, no distractions. Because oh, I am telling you, I have persons, and I just said this in my class on Thursday night. I have persons saying, Miss Bullet, I was the valedictorian. I just graduated um, 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 three years ago. And I can't pass this class. And it ain't because the person ain't smart enough. It's because she is so overwhelmed. Oh, I in this club and my husband is a pastor and I have to do this for church and I gotta, you can't do it. For the next five weeks, you have to play your schedule. You have to act to let your work know that you are in class. Most institutions give you study leave. You have to book it now because you already know when your exam is. So ask for the study so leave. Some um, um, offices give two days, some give a week. Okay, find out what the benefit is. But please minimize the distractions. Speak to your children, speak to your husbands, speak to your wives. Work with me until I get through this. And I go owe you a favor, okay? Or something to that. I, 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 because we home and be online and, and, and our time is not respected, you know? So please set some boundaries. I, uh, I pretend I am at, in the office or I am at work. And you say, Miss Bullet, you going on too long with this. No, I'm telling you, the major reason why people are not successful is because they are distracted. They are overwhelmed with life. And they driving home, they in the car. I can't pay attention. Okay, so please just 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 put some time to yourself where you can have uninterrupted time. Okay, so back to these essays. So ICA requires thirty five hundred words, and that's a lot. And so we want to get you into the practice. So each essay should be a thousand to twelve hundred words. Okay. A lot of you said that you know I haven't been in school for a while, so I do recommend taking. English 119 to remind you how to write a proper thesis, introduction, or a proper essay. We don't learn that here. We learn that in English, okay? And if you need a refresher, speak to Miss Dean, or you could go online. Google has lots of information on how to format an essay properly. Again, we're preparing you for ICA because if it's not formatted properly, if there's no introduction, no thesis, This is me. Am I frozen? I was and just I, about to ask. Uh, I can't okay. hear anything. I was like, what? You see what happened? I, I got scared. <laughs> I thought I saw being an engine for two. In the interim. Woo. In the interim, um, please be reminded to send your number in the chat if you haven't already and ensure that your number is correct. Um, I'll add everyone to the group shortly. 
Okay, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. We appreciate you. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, guys. Sorry, but that, that's our good, reliable DPL. Just shut Miss Bullet off. Is, is everybody there? Yeah, we still yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 It's only me. Okay. Yes, yeah. Sorry about that. So, okay. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, but the screen. Oh. Okay. But can you just pull it up on your screens? Because I, I'm gonna. If I try and share the screen on this device, it's gonna cause it to not be clear. Mm. Okay. So we're looking at the instruction page. Okay, so avoid copy and paste. It says late submissions within two days of the due date will be subjected to a 10% reduction in your grade. And then after two days, the essays will not be accepted. But primarily, Ms. Bullet don't accept late homework because if you miss the October 21st date, then just go on to the October 28th and then just go on to the court, which you know what I mean? It can't be that you miss all the dates. You have four opportunities, okay? So is it clear on how to get your 20%? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now a, a lot of people opt and they, 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 oh, I don't need to do my homework, but the final exam is only worth 70%. So if you do not do your homework, that means you have to get 100% on the final, okay? And in the last six years, we've had like 200%. So I would suggest that you do your homework. Okay, and, and if you need help, join this group, you know, the WhatsApp group to make sure that you get help with the homework. Okay, we are com um, compliance officers. Um, we are required every, every morning of the CEO comes to my office and he wants to know what's happening in, in Bahamian news. And he is from Venice, um, not Venice, sorry. He's from Switzerland. So he wants me to know the Swiss news as well, okay? So we are required to read the newspaper every day. The business section now, not the comics. And we come to class and the first half an hour of class because the persons are normally late. So we will start promptly at 9.30. And from 9.30 to 10, we give persons the opportunity to discuss what would happen in the news this week, okay? So if you work in a local bank, of course, yes, Bahamian News, but if you work in an international bank where you deal with the, the Venezuela and the Switzerland and all these sorts um, of countries, please <coughs> chime into those news paper articles as well and, and share it with us. Um, the thing for me is that I added them to my Facebook feed. And so I see the headlights and I don't read every, again, you don't wanna be overwhelmed with trying to read the entire business section. So, you know, Whatever stands out to you, you read that article and you come and you share it with the class. And that's how you get your 5% for participation. Okay. Um, again, like I said, compliance is decision based. So I ask you to subscribe to the financial, Bahamas Financial Services Board, the Central Bank, or whomever is your regulator, the Securities Commission, the F, the Financial Action Task Force, the FIU and any other website applicable. And once you subscribe to their website, what you will see happen is as they have updates, they will send them into your um, email box. And then again, you can just read the, the highlights. But as a compliance professional, um, I was audited by I'm Central Bank at one point. point. Sorry, Robin, you said something? Sorry, I'm supposed to talk my yeah. mic was talking to oh. my son. Apologies. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So try, make sure that you, um, oh no, I was saying I was audited one time by the central bank and they came in and they said, um, we'd like to check the publications that you would have shared with your organizations. Do you share the publications? So I said, of course, I'm subscribed to your website. So they say, well, we sent out a publication that was applicable to HR and we sent one that was applicable to finance. Can you show it to us where you, um, would you would have sent it out? And I said, oh, I didn't know that was a function. I mean, I normally do discuss what, you know, with the board, 
what happens with the regulator, but I've never, you know, kept those emails. I said, but I can go back and look. And they said, please. And so I was going to get an audit note if I wasn't able to show that I discussed with the regulator announced with the relevant department. Okay. So you are not only, you know, getting the highlights, but if you work in the compliance department, you are supposed to be sharing like all you gaming board persons. If the gaming board sends out um, so an information newsletter or something of a law change and it's applicable to a certain department or to the entire organization, you should have to prove that you disseminated that information and it was discussed, okay? So look out for stuff like that. Um, also, BACO is the Bahamas Association of Compliance Officers. You can now join as a student. So there's an application process at the Institute. You can speak to Ms. Dean, and then um, you can find out how you can become a student, especially if you're gonna go all the way to ICA. Then there is 5% for networking. Um, of course, there are 24 persons in this class. At the end of the class, I only have one job, right? And just human nature. Who, who, who I got hire? I got hire Nashan King because I asked everybody to be an administrator and Nashan said, Miss Bullet, I could do it. Nashan only met me five minutes ago and she she volunteered. So Nashan, you got the job. Because at the end of the day, we have 24 persons, or 24 of us are going to be qualified. Who I could pick? Nishan volunteer right up front. I can put it, that's just what happens. Okay, so make sure. That, sorry. No. I, okay, I thought somebody said something. You are still there, right? Are we still here? Okay. All right. Good. So make sure that you know the right people. Corporate America. I'm sorry. Corporate Bahamas is very vicious, right? And, you know, we like to complain. You know, the same people get promoted every single time. They must be friends, lovers, or family, right? But sometimes they are just connected well, okay? And ain't nothing you can do about it. In Canada, they had the same problem where uh, entry-level Canadians felt that if you didn't know somebody, you couldn't move up, okay? So they started this whole new mentoring program, and they didn't even have enough execs in Canada. So um, I had to mentor somebody out of Canada and every meeting that I had to go to, I had to take them to virtually. Um, Any time I met with the regulator, I had to explain that I'm mentoring this person. Um, I had to spend a certain amount of hours with them. I had to upgrade their, help them update their resume, put them in school, help them with their homework, all sorts of stuff. So they can move up and be known, you know, if there was a position available. So that, that's what happened in NASA. We don't know the right people, okay? And so therefore, corporate Bahamas does not hang out the fish fry or to the dock getting counseling. They hang out in Toastmasters, Rotary, or Kiwanis. So what I do is I offer you an extra 5%. If you go out to one of those organizations, you come back and you share it with the class and you introduce yourself. Now, don't just go, and a lot of them are online, so it isn't that you have to physically get dressed and go. You go online and you just introduce yourself. And again, um, some of us may already be connected to those groups and can just send an invite to the WhatsApp group and invite everybody. And anybody in any of those civic organizations is yet? I am. I'm part of Seven Toast Masters Club, Natasha, Seven Rotary Clubs. Okay, so would you be able to send some invites to the group? Everybody. Okay, okay, you want to know all male one A. Why you say that? You feel like you biased me. I am not. No, no, I guess I <laughs> It's a lot of ladies. I I don't know nah. if you would be able to invite them. Yeah, I'm a part of several Toastmasters group, including that one. No. But I, I'm a part of at least four or five. So I'll I'll okay. find something. Else okay, Rodney, good, very good. And do you agree? This where corporate Bahamas hanging out. This where the execs hang out. 100%. 100%. Okay, so please get to know the movers and shakers of the industry. So when your resume comes across the their desk, they say, Rodney, I know where Rodney, where I know Rodney from. Okay, Rodney is already qualified. Let me let me call him. 
Okay, so put yourself out there, introduce yourself. Now, to get your five points, you don't come and just say, Miss Bullet, I've been. I ain't really meet nobody. No, Toastmasters normally has a word for the day. They tell us what the speaker um, says, they tell us what the word of the day was. And sometimes um, the, the meeting was about backyard farming. Okay, and that's fine. So we, we want to be fully well rounded at the end of this five weeks. So don't worry with the topic. Is just just go and try your best to participate and introduce yourself. Okay, network. And let me just tell you all who makes it that Miss Bully, that's a waste of time. That's only five percent. Five percent is the difference between sixty-five and seventy, which eighty percent of the classes need. And then that next five percent is the difference between eighty-five and ninety for the scholars who have to have an A. Okay, so easy way to bump yourself up. So please, and again, participation. If Miss Bullet calling your name every week and there's no response, you don't get participation points. Okay, and I am adamant about that. If at the end of five weeks I don't know you, no participation points. And, and Miss Bullet don't get reported for that over and over. I don't have to pay the recordings to say, I say Miss Roll 10 times and Miss Roll never answer. Okay, <laughs> so please. Please, um, people have failed without these points. So please take it serious. Um, your final exam, already we know, November the 12th. Please speak to your institutions. If they offer the study leave, put your days in now. It'll re really help, okay? 15 multiple choice and seven essays, wow. okay? Yeah, it's achievable, it's a lot. Like I told you, it's a lot but it's achievable, okay? These four questions are previous essay questions. Um, you said you said it's seven, it, seven yeah. essay questions, you have to do all seven or you, or you select from seven? Yeah, you have 10 choices and you select seven. Okay, so and I, it, this exam is gonna be in person at the Institute and it's going to be recorded. Okay, it's handwritten. And what's the, how, how much time do we have to complete this? Three hours. Okay. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's like, what, 1,000 to 1,200 words? No, 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 one page, one page. Only the homework is 1,000 to 1,200. Each essay you write one page with 10 points. Each, each is essay is 10 that? points. Yeah. Trying to figure out how long an essay should be, you know. So if you have three hours and you have to write seven, so you schedule about 20 minutes to write one page, a page and a half the most. Okay, so what's, the suggested, what's the suggested word count? Um, oh, it doesn't go by word. 200, yeah, yeah. We don't, just as handwritten, so about 200 words the most. Okay. Yeah, All right, great. 300. Okay. Ms. Bullard, um, Ferguson Freeport again. Um, mm -hmm. Have we identified a facility and um, a facilitator for our exam? Yes. So Ms. Dean, closer to the exam, she will give you the week before all the details on how to get. Um, there's a office about five minutes from the airport where you would okay, go close, that exam. close to Jeremy's auto. That confirmed then. Yeah. Okay. And she will right. arrange that information with you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody on any other island in Freeport? Okay, everybody else in NASA. Okay, good. Good. Oh, any 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 questions? Hi. Um. Will we? Sorry, someone else was going to speak. Okay. Yeah, I don't see... mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, will we have access to like other previous questions for our practice? Well, these are the pass exam questions, so no, th that's all you'd have access to there. You. When you get to intermediate, there is class work for each chapter. Now, if you look at the back of your book, there's an appendix at the back of your book. So I think your book ends on, it's only eight chapters. The chapters are primarily small, two to three pages. And so as you go on, two to three pages for intro, five to six pages for intermediate, and then 30 to 70 pages in the ICA books. 
Okay, so I think your book would end because Miss Bullet has an older copy. Your book will end on um, page 60, 61. Okay, yeah. Can and then, you, yeah. you see an appendix? 60 is the end, and then yeah. it's on 60. Okay, so you, those are practice questions, practice multiple choice questions. And then you will see scenarios. So the book is the first eight chapters, like I said, two or three pages. Then there's an appendix where you have some practice questions. Then um, there are some case studies there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so and then there are different excerpts from the um, internet that are cut off by colored paper. Mm. So do you have some colored paper at the back and it should say case one, case two, case three? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So today, if we have time, we'll do case case three or four, I think. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, so that's how the book works. So lot, loads of um, um, stuff at the back uh, for you to practice to get an idea on how the questions will be set up. Okay, mm. and if we look at that appendix question, is the first question, how does, um, who is the ultimate responsibility for compliance? Who has the ultimate responsibility for compliance in an institution? Is that the first question? Yes. 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 Okay, most answered wrong question on every exam. Okay, people automatically think the ultimate responsibility lies with the compliance department or with the MLRO. It does not, it lies with the board, okay? So the ultimate responsibility in an organization for anti-money laundering and compliance lies with the board, the board of directors, okay? So again, as you go through the book, you will find all these answers and you, you will come across them. Okay, now I hope some of y'all ain't done run away. I, I tell y'all, it's a lot of work, but it's achievable, okay? Ms. Bullard, I, I can do this. Good morning, Ms. Bullard. Good yeah. Evening. Yes, ma'am. I have ma a question about the homework. How, how often are we gonna have homework after every session? No, if you look at the homework, each homework has a due date. You are to select one, and you are, sub you are to submit one for your 20%. So just one homework you have. You're welcome to answer the questions for practice, but you don't have to submit them. You won't get a grade. You'll only get a grade for one. Okay. So are there okay. any quizzes during the classes or? No, no quizzes. Okay. Again, at the back of your book, you yeah. can practice with those questions. Okay. Okay. Um, to piggyback on what Ms. Grant asked, I wondered if, if we do submit if we wanted that practice and we do submit, would you be open to actually grading and critiquing for a system? Yeah, I, I won't grade, but I will give a feedback and tell you you would have gotten a certain grade. Now, last, I've had to cut back on a lot of courtesies because I was reported for my courtesies, right? Wow. Normally, in classes, if you do not understand, you, you hire a tutor, right? Outside of one, marked essay, you need to hire a tutor. However, I don't have a problem when to give feedback. However, I was reported saying that she sent her four questions and, and I take too long to give her feedback. And I said, but I have 24 people to give feedback to. And you did one essay five times, you know? And that's another thing. If you don't get full points on the first essay, you can't say, well, let me change it to get 100 no i give you feedback and for the exam then you you know try and do your best put in what's missing but you don't have five attempts till you get to 100 percent. it doesn't work like that no. I, I promise i won't report you miss bullock thank you nadasha thank you so That's i don't LaKeisha, mind having LaKeisha. <laughs> hey, oh, LaKeisha. okay okay when the first okay. report miss bullet is fall apart the first i go okay my courtesy uh, is it, 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 it won't be me it won't be me <laughs> okay thank you thank you okay no, eddie eddie you have a uh a, a question yes. um it, are there provisions to 
take the final exam if um, you're not available during that time because I have some engagement coming up. Um, we are on the family island um, in the next couple of weeks. So yeah. I don't, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be actually in town doing that, doing um, November 12th, which is the date. So um, is there like, a, a, can I retake the exam or make alternative arrangements to do a, yes. a, another exam? Yes. So you will make alternative arrangements with Miss okay. Dean. She uh -huh. will schedule you and we will give you a separate exam. Okay. 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 All right. Great. All right. Thank you for letting us know up front because what we yeah. all go had to implement is on exam date, mm -hmm. people have not shown up. Okay. Yeah. If you do not show up on the exam date, it's a $200 fee. If you don't have an approved excuse. Right. Okay. Right. So people do have yeah. emergencies mm -hmm. and, and things do happen, but uh, the next day you'd have to bring your sex slip or whatever and speak. All of that is handled through the office. So please let Miss Dean know prior, yeah, right. not post. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Um, Trevor Molly. Um, um, I don't see the page on uh, 60. I don't see it in my book. I have something different when I turn to the page. Okay, turn oh. it over. You might be on 61. You looking for the appendix? Yes. Okay, that's like. Oh, so the off. appendix, I found it past, I found it just before the case studies. So yeah, if you're on the pages with the case studies, then keep going back into the textbook till you get to the first case study. Okay, I mean, the first case one on the blue page. And then you should find the appendix with the questions and the other cases. Oh, way back to the front. You want to see way before those are on orange pages. Yeah, yeah. way before the yeah. colored pages. Yeah, like two pages before the car, the color page. Two pages before the color page, you see a bandit. Let us know, say hi. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, Okay, so maybe everybody we see it and we all on the same page. Page 87. Can you repeat the page, please? Sorry. Could you repeat the page, please? So look for the colored paper, right? the first piece of colored paper. So just before the colored paper, you should see it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, do we have any questions, concerns? Um, we understand that this is a discussion-based class, which means you read the chapters first. And then you come to class ready to have a provocative discussion. You understand that? Okay. Bullet eye, you ain't gonna see me after the day. <laughs> Tell me, give me some feedback. What y'all think is too intense or or what? But the compliance people, you all have no choice. The rest of y'all, uh, give me some feedback, please. Talk to Miss Bullet. We we haven't saw anything yet, so yeah, I guess after we start talking, let you know. But for the most part, we were ready, right? Okay, okay, very good, very good. Okay, so we'll see how it goes. And like I said, it's five weeks, and once you make it past the first class, then it's no use you turn back. Okay, no use. Um, you could make it through the five weeks. Okay, good. I am trying to switch back to devices, but y'all can hear me clearly. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Debbie, you have a a question. Go ahead. There's nothing over the um homework thing. Sorry. That is the homework is due. I'm trying to read that to understand when the homework is due. Right. So each homework you can pick. Each one has a separate date. 
So oh. if you're busy next week, then choose question two. Okay, I see. I see now. Yeah, yeah. So, but it has to be in on the due date. Okay. So we can type that in and then send that in to. Yeah, to my information is yeah. Yeah, type it in an essay form, send it in. Please don't send me an email. Send it as an attachment okay. and to my email address. Okay. okay. And you were saying to check um, if you need an update on um, writing skills. Yeah, yeah. check Ms. Dean. Um, um, the uh, office has our uh, English 119. Uh, it, that it offers and it, it really has because some of us been out of school from 1999. So don't feel no type of way about it or go online and see what Google has. Google has a lot of good videos that tells you how to write a thesis, how to write an introduction, which is AMA, AMA ALA, all these different writing forms. And then the how to cite, you can read that in the IC, ICA book. Okay, because when you write, you don't want to say, um, change it and went to jail. You want to say, according to the Nassau Guardian on February the 28th, 1980, Shane Gibson was charged, allegedly charged with corruption and bribery or something like that. Okay, so that's his references. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, any other questions? As for clarification purposes, the class um, moving forward starts at 9.30, right? For persons that came late. Yes, yes. And so we spoke about that. I know the book says 10 and 9, so we can do a majority vote. Um, most persons said 9.30 is fine. But if there was a specific reason why we need to start at 10, then we can continue on at 10. Is there any anybody that has a reason that we need to start at 10 or 9.30 is fine? 9.30 is fine with okay. me. Okay. okay. So we will end at 12 because we also have a 30 minute break. Okay? Okay, oh. good. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, so um, we'll move on to chapter one and chapter two. We're gonna cover two chapters each um class and remember so for next week you are to read chapters two and three and come ready for your provocative discussion okay so two and three yeah two and three for next week um what did i want let me just give you some history so we know how we even got here right and so like i said you know Royal Bank has been around for 1908, 100 plus years. Scotia has been around for 60 plus years, right? And they also always had the HR department, the finance department, the credit department. However, compliance is fairly new. I don't know if we remember back in 2000, the Bahamas was blacklisted. Yes. I, and I'm seeing as, and I think we blacklisted now because it's, it's up in arms. So, um, we were blacklisted um, as a non-cooperative jurisdiction. And what we had to do is put laws in place to ensure that the Bahamas joined the global fight against money laundering and terrorist financing. So there are international regulators, and we'll cover this in chapter three, there are international regulators who put recommendations in place. And I, I, I'm just trying to get back on this system. One second, so I can share the screen so we can have a visual of what Ms. Bull is talking about. One second, I think I can get back in now. Recording. 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 Recording.
Yeah, sorry about that, Val. So I was switching over, got a lot of feedback. Um, are we there? Let's put it. Yes. Quick yes. yes. question. Yes. We are blacklisted now. They would they I saw an article in the newspaper again that said that um a review was done on government IT systems and it was found that they were inadequate. And so therefore they were gonna blacklist us. So I it isn't official, but I, I don't know if it's a room. I don't think it is. So I, I, I guess think, we can um, see. Did anybody else see that in the papers? Yeah, I, I heard of it and um I think that had to do with the European Union and the prime minister had spoken about it at the United Nations. It seems like they're always moving the mark on those stuff. Right. And so remember now, um, you know, yeah, for um, a very long time, um, yeah. part of the history, you know, regulation is expensive. You don't just put laws in the place and there's nobody there to enforce it. So all of the regulators had to hire, um, you know, new persons and analyt analytics departments and inspectors now to ensure that all the laws that were put in place, these 40 recommendations are being enforced. Okay, so the Bahamas had to take a staggered approach to, you know, implementing these laws. Um, somebody else wanted to say something? Um, basically, I was saying um, the EU, they did add um, Anguilla, the Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos to its blacklist of tax havens. And what some have called a fig leaf exercise and that was as of September 26. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so just again, back to the history. So um, can you all see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. And we'll talk some more about this in, in just a yeah. three. So basically... Um, whenever you read a body of work, you need to make sure you look at the date because when you go to Google and you put in FATF 40 recommendations, the 2012 version comes up first. People click on that and I've had people write 3,500 word essays on outdated policy. So that's the first check. And then, like I say, these policies are two, 300 pages. You want to go directly to the table of contents and you know, see what you are looking for. So there's an update on 2020, but um, or 2022, but this is just for illustrative purposes. So back in 2000, the FATF came up with 20 recommendations and, and this is what the recommendations look like. Okay, these are the 40. If we look at um, recommendation one, it talks about assessing and, uh, and applying a risk-based approach. So of course, what that meant is that the Bahamas had to put this in law and they call it recommendations. But again, if you do not put it in law, they blacklist you, right? And so the Bahamas has been back and forth complaining, saying that, you know, we are a small jurisdiction. In terms of taxes, America spent, I think $18 million to upgrade their IRS so they could accept, you know, the FACA tax. The Bahamas, the Central Bank, Compliance Commission, Insurance Commission don't have no $18 billion to put a system, and that's only a system that they put in place. You have to hire people to man the system. You have to put in a, an analytics department. You, you know, all of this is money. And so compliance makes no money for the business, but it's very expensive. So a lot of organizations and even countries tend to shy away from spending money on compliance. They more concern about salespeople getting the full budget because sales is making all the money for the business. However, there has to be a balance between sales and compliance because compliance protects the business from shutting down as well as protects the business from reputational risk and protects the business from fines, okay? But again, organizations and countries do not wanna you know, spend that money where they ain't gonna make that money. Right, and so these are the 40 recommendations. And from recommendation 10, you find um, that it talks about um, customer due diligence. So out of the 40 recommendations, 14 to 15 of them fall all under customer due diligence. So due diligence is very important. Okay, and again, this is a visual. We're gonna get in depth when we get to chapter 
three and then when we um, get to intermediate. Okay, so they put international regulators put these 40 recommendations in place. The Bahamas put some laws back in 2000 in place. However, back then we were of course known as a tax jurisdiction. Um, we had a lot of secrecy laws and basically that made us very popular, um, our secrecy laws that we had to eliminate. So if we had immediately changed our secrecy laws back in 2000, that means that a lot of banks and trusts would have closed down then. So I don't know if you all realize uh, the contraction of the financial services sector, banks closing down left, right, and center simply because they could not afford to put you know, a, a million dollar system in place like the IRS. They could not afford to hire 20 persons to man the industry or to man the department. Okay, they could not train and pay for training for persons every year, v very expensive. Okay, so the Bahamas took a staggered approach and they put a shell of the um, laws or these recommendations in place to make it, you know, a pair for us to be, you know, compliant. However, we weren't. And I don't want you to think it's only the Bahamas. Switzerland was deficient. Germany was deficient. All these EU countries that blacklisted us, our left, right, and center, they were deficient as well. The problem is that the Bahamas does not have a seat on the international table, okay? And once you don't have a seat at the international table, nobody cares about you. So the same people who are the prime ministers and the ministers of foreign affairs and whatever of these countries that make up the EU are the same people that sit on the board. Okay, and so of course, if you was the chair person of the board and they say blacklist um, Switzerland, you say, oh no, 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 we can't get blacklisted. This, that generates reputational risk for the country. However, nobody from the Bahamas there. And in many jurisdictions, the Bahamas is considered the competitor. So therefore blacklisted Bahamas also in favor say aye. Nobody there to say no. Go ahead, Eddie. Um. I will kind of be devil's advocate in this particular on this particular topic. Um, <laughs> as it relates to that too, uh, let's not forget before the um, the Ingram administration came into place. Um, I think you know Selendon Pen under his under his administration, he were of the view that you know we were independent and we you know we we shouldn't be subjected to the control of the EU with these blacklisting and all of that and. The, and he was not in favor of us giving away our bank secrecy laws and all of these other different um, um, benefits, um, which, which you know, I, I believe at that time, if we if we had um, continued with our approach, we would be like Switzerland. Because when when you think of deregulating or regulating Switzerland, like I said, they say the same thing. They say, oh no, we can't do it because it brings, like you said, reputational risk to our country. But we were in the same position before that and like I said they they blacklisted us but I felt that you know seeing that you know if, if we are if we had continued on the same path we would probably be like um uh was that a country um that 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 also you know they they pretty much are adamant and they 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 continue to to go for I, I I think it's BVI I think it's the other country I can't remember the name right now in the Caribbean um, that also, you know, does the same thing that, that Switzerland does. I, okay, so Eddie, I agree with you. You are 100% correct. But let's put ourselves in Finland's shoes, okay? What do you do for a country that imports 90% of the, or 100% of food source, right? And, and, and anything else that we need. A very small um, economy that 20% uh, of GDP is offshore services. 70% is tourism, okay? So now if 20% of GDP is offshore services and we're gonna throw away our secrecy laws, and as you see, the banking system has severely contracted, I think we are now at 3% of GDP. What, what, what is our next industry? How does your country survive? If you don't even at least use a staggered approach and tell you could probably unwind the natural resources or get some taxes in place. What, what do you do? Just let the country collapse? Well, my view is, you know, the EU, just like 
um, they keep putting whenever they're ready, they can keep put the, continue to put their, their foot on our necks, on our proverbial yeah. necks, yeah, because I, I don't whim. You know, you say, kill me. You say, give me a chance. You see, and and, we, and let me develop, you know, find another way for my country to survive. Yeah. You know, you think, say, kill me. I understand um, <laughs> your, your, your viewpoint, and I agree with you. You know, it's being a, especially a financial service provider, a country and also a country, a country that provides, that lives off tourism yeah, yeah. And, right, right. and those but i think also too for the political direct could have could have displayed a little more testicle for the fortitude and their way they deal with the EU, eu because we gave away a lot of industries um that we could have been benefit now you know and when you look at the other countries um you know how they benefit from and, and like you said they have a, a reputational um advantage so when you think of you know um, you, you, you automatically you think of Switzerland, you think of these um, tax havens that they've been doing it for years and they continue to facilitate, you know, presidents and of different countries who have their offshore, their, their, um, their tax, um, whatever, their, their bank accounts in these particular, or their assets in these offshore um, tax havens. And they, you know, so it's, I think it's always, it's a hypocrisy on, on both sides. But, but it is. It, but we it are is just caught. Any, but we you said, okay, but let me tell you what has happened. So when Peter Turncrest was minister, he lashed out at them. When Ryan Pinder was minister, he lashed out at, at them. And what happened was a lot of times we were um, blacklisted. It was because of technical errors, not because we didn't, I mean, we did use a staggered approach, but whatever they had asked us to do, we had done. And so after the lashing out, the OECD said, I am no longer going to blacklist you then as the international regulator. So that's where you see now the European Union, but they blacklisting us and Germany and France and all these different people, right? And so um, basically they're the same players. These same prime ministers and presidents are the same ones who make up the EU and the same ones that are sit on the OECD board and so that's what i'm saying in the fatf court if you don't have presence nobody cares you either have a seat at the table you be there to advocate for your your country or, or you your country just gets left behind and pushed left right and center and so carl bethel when he was attorney general he for one year was the chairman of the cfatf and so luckily he he got some things done in that one year but now he is no longer in the government and I don't know if he holds that, that's, you know, any type of um, chairmanship at all, but you need international um, uh, persons or uh, Bahamians to go internationally to represent the Bahamas or we get left behind. I think we have Kev Abain as the uh, head of the UN or something like that. But other than that, one other person out there globally, nobody out there advocating for the Bahamas so they can slap us around left, right and center. And if you look at, America, America, like I said, spent $18 million to develop their IRS, right? Because they had it. And they are non-reciprocal when it comes to taxes. So that means send us all our tax dollars. But if you, if your country like Switzerland, or, you know, we're not going to tell you how much Swiss dollars in America. So how is that fair? Cayman is non-reciprocal. The UAE is non-reciprocal. So that means these laws are for any country that can defend themselves. Right? Right, Eddie? That's agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So so that's why, you know, Penn and Tuck that stands like, you, you know, just like animals farm. All of us are equal, <laughs> but some of us are more equal than others. All right. Right? <laughs> yeah. Rodney, chime in, please. You had your hand up long. That's a good you know, I'm trying to be polite. You can cross and jump in next time. Because... <laughs> What what is I, I hear it out of context. It seemed like Finland and the prime ministers after didn't sign up, but in terms of the context of money, Switzerland is holding the Bahamas does not see. So it's easier for Switzerland to be rossy to say we're not going to comply because they're holding all our key money. We were holding drug dealer money over here. That kind of money is not the same. So the Bahamas has today less than half a million people. The presence that we have on the global scale is not that. So we have to comply. And then I know you mentioned it earlier in terms of we we are not in a place of leverage because we don't import. One of the reasons why we can't be Cuba, if, if they close the doors, if we're like off the coast of America, if America closes the doors now, what are we going to do? And America knows that. 
So they're going to now, you know what, we got to make sure some, some constraints is hold. Switzerland doesn't have that problem. Switzerland's on the other side of the world. And Switzerland finds a lot of money in this world, a lot of dirty money, but a lot of money nevertheless. So we are more compliant. One, two, we are at the behest of people because we need to borrow money. The reason why we will forever be tiptoeing and jumping around for persons because we need to borrow money because we do not generate our own money. So that's why we have to be a little bit more compliant or singing for our civil no, no, because- maybe, I agree with you, but we know these things for the last 20 years. Where, no, I'm saying so it's tough to blame. No, but what it, have we done? Nothing no, except talk that. about it. Agree, but we it's tough to blame. We, we, have, we, have nation. we know that we don't have the money. We see other ju jurisdictions are non-reciprocal Cayman. Tex and Caicos, come on. So Do one, Tex and Caicos is independent. Two, Cayman has. No, Tex and Caicos is not. It. They're still a British colony. That, that's America. That's because that's the UK little outer island where they do all their dirt. And that's what I'm saying. And then Cayman, Cayman are exporting, them. exporting their their financial services. Right. To your so point, what now, I'm saying say, is, mm -hmm. what have we done? We know this. What you say, we agree with you. We know that we cannot leverage. We know that we don't have the representation. We don't have the money. What have we done in the last 20 years? Just say, no, but by now, from Finland to now, to all these people who've been in the government for 40 years, they should have come up with a plan. But this, and this they knew is that where... it was in inevitable. They knew that at one point you will have to be compliant if you weren't large enough, if you don't have the representation. So right? with everything, I, no, again, we say in the same way, but everything in context, if compliance to your point just came around, we have yet to have a sustainable industry for the Bahamas for our independence. Compliance is a new kid on the block. We ain't figured out a lot of other stuff yet. We still have schools not open up on time. So I hear it, but like it's 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 in context, like everything is in context. So I agree, and it takes classes like this and persons to now our gate and really put it to the government to yeah. say, let's make some things in place. But yeah. I don't think it's fair to say do some lock and testicle for it to it, testicle for it to it. Because they tried, but at the same time, too, no, let's not act like. They tried it, I sorry. You think so? You so much hands in the pocket. And again, if we be playing speaking, I don't get this thing recorded. There's a lot of more things that they see that we do not see. What is the That's agenda of each government? What do you have you seen seen when you find government really fly around the world and build big houses? Have you seen anybody like be fiscally responsible and 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 not have corruption attached to them and, and did totally agree? And that's not you need to the bombers. So yeah, so we this totally is yeah. talk, and that's my biggest problem. We talk for three hours, and I hate meetings because of that. We talk for three hours, nobody takes minutes, we walk away, and we come back tomorrow and say, Let's have another meeting. Nothing's done. Nothing ever is done. Okay, mm -hmm. but good, good guys that we all on the same page. And, and, and class again, um, it, it this is why we want to read the newspaper because we want to say whatever we we do in theory, what is the practical, what's happening in the Bahamas? Okay, our country needs help. We need uh, a, a fresh later government. We need um, um, ethical people who are educated. Okay, we need no more friends, family, and lovers. We need to, to, to get it together to get our country where it ought to be, okay? So back to these 40 recommendations, right? If you don't put them in place, you you are blacklisted. And so for the last um, few years, like the Bahamas took a staggered approach because it washed out the industry. Um, if you had to pay taxes in your country, there's no use, you come to a tax haven. So a lot of persons just repatriated the money back to their country and you saw banks closing down left, right, and center, okay? And so therefore, we need to think about what will be our new industry if we lose so much of the offshore bank, or we have already lost it, you know? So what's next? What does the Bahamas do? How, how do we make money, okay? So in 2017, around the world, just like I said, um, the regulators beefed up their analytics department. They went around the world checking to see who was compliant, who was in compliance. They found that, the Bahamas was deficient in 22 of the 40 regulations, the, sorry, the 40 recommendations. And so they did a, a mutual evaluation um, report and they said, you all have to fix this. So from 2018, a lot of um, things have changed in law. And once it, it goes from recommendation, it goes to Bahamian law, then each regulator has a guideline which like I attach the central bank guideline as a regulator for banks, then each 
institution then has its own internal policy. And so it should mimic what your regulator states. And it depends on the products and services that you offer, okay? So that, that, that's how it works. And so essentially what compliance officers do is ensure that institutions are remaining compliant, following the guidelines, doing what is in writing, okay? And so are there any questions in terms of a little bit of the history, how compliance started, um, what's happening? where we're at now, okay? And so one of the deficiencies was that the Bahamas did not have money laundering as a predicate crime on its books, okay? And so after 218, you know, we now see people being charged with not only fraud, fraud and money laundering, stealing by reason of employment and money laundering, tax evasion and money laundering. Prior to 218, they just got the lesser charge of fraud or stealing by reason of employment. So now that money laundering is a crime, let's look at chapter one and see what chapter one says and what, what, it, what it talks about. Okay. Um, so we all have, we said all of that. Miss Bullet Long been dead. I tell you what, you all got to wheel me in. <laughs> okay. But I, I just want you all to understand. Okay. Where, where this started and and what this all about? Oh, and for the record, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not political, so just, just, just so you know. <laughs> um, neither am I. I, I you I, cannot I, say I, that after we call out the prime minister now. So you should say that first. Okay, you, you should say doctor. you have big double PLB. You know, you're not going to do it. You keep on, you keep on, Dick. You have a drink. You have, you have, you have a drink. The Kool Aid. You have a drink. The Kool Aid. The pen and Kool Aid. I, I heard that was good. No, that's before my time, so I know you're talking about. He going, Dick. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, he going, Dick. Our prime minister, our best prime minister. Yeah. Our free prime minister, big rock to him. And then yeah. say, he's not being political. No right. more. <laughs> right. But it, it's good, guys. It's good that you are able to chime mm -hmm. in. Um, what, what was I going to say? Okay. So we in the chapter one. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so chapter one talks about money laundering. Okay. And Money laundering is um, basically uh, the use of illegal property or any anybody who wrongfully attains money and then tries to infiltrate it through the financial services sector, okay? And so they normally say that there are three stages of money laundering. PLI. Um, sorry? I say PLI, that's how I used the acronym. I was trying oh, to do oh, things as a okay. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So um, three stages of money laundering is placement, layering, and then integration, okay? And I normally tell a little story so we are all able to understand exactly what happens with placement, layering, and integration. So what happens is, we go out, we do a drug deal, and um, Ms. Bullard started her career off as Royal Bank, with Royal Bank on the teller lineup. So on the teller lineup, um, we had a car wash guy right outside the branch. And so right outside the branch, he always cleaned our cars, and then he came in and he said, Ms. Bullard, I'd like to open an account with you. And I said, okay, fine, no problem. Bring in your passport, your national insurance, and what have you, and we'll be able to open up this account. And so I said, how much money? He said, well, I just make like $100 a week from cleaning all the cars in the bank, but I will be able to deposit like $50. So I said, okay, fine. So we verified him for $50. Okay, so everything was going well, and he was very happy. And he said, um, thank you, Ms. Bullet. I'm able to save now. So he started off saving and then he one day brought in $10,000. Hey. Okay, so tell me now, he brought in his passport, we verified, he brought in all his IDs, we opened up the account, but now here it goes from 50 to 10,000. What would, what would we call that? Red light. Red light. Okay, red light. Red light. Okay. And, and 
let's just say not everybody is illegitimate, right? Some people, he, he might have had a grandmother die and left him an inheritance. He might have sold the car, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Or he, he could have had a job. So I said, that's okay. That's nice. All right. Yeah, somebody, can you mute your mics, please? We're getting some feedback. Yeah. Oh, like our movie. Hello, okay. Natasha. Yes. Could you mute so your I'm mic? We're getting feedback. Yeah. No, you don't get no feedback from my house. That's only me on the video. That person's okay. on like their baby. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I was saying like with the with the car wash guy, unless he brought in some kind of form of information, like you know, some support with that ten thousand, you know, right. that definitely and, would have been a red flag. Right. So unless he declared the source of funds, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we don't automatically want to say, okay, you 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 do something illegal. All right. So a lot of us right outside our institutions, we have a car wash guy. We call him Yadi. He has an alias. We don't even know who he is. Correct? But at the Securities Commission, the car wash guy was able to go into somebody's car because they clean it once a week and steal checks out. And he defrauded the Securities Commission at $850,000. Okay? So be very careful of who you let access your car, who has your keys, and um, all that personal information. Okay? Now back to my car wash guy. So he bought in this $10,000. Okay? What what should Miss Bullet have, have, have done? Ask him where he got this money from, right? Source of points. Yes. Source of points. Right, and so he had been outside cleaning our cars for about two years. So he said, Miss Bullard, I hit a little lick. Lick a what? Okay, I know you could be proud of me for this $10,000. Uh -uh. <laughs> and, and right, because we have all those, we have those friends and sometimes family members who on the wrong side of the law, right? And they think that we are cool with this, right? So right? Miss Bullard. Speaking right. from speaking from gaming, Miss Miss Bullard, um, maybe if you you could have left. by winning a number. Yeah, right, right. But winning a number before two thousand and fifteen, winning a number okay. now is legal. So if you win a number, there's no problem, okay. right? Because it's no longer against the law; it's legal. Mm -hmm. So there's no problem if you win a number. You take it to the the um bank and you show them your receipt. So that's that's mm -hmm. no issue, correct? Mm. Yeah, because right. it's legal. Now, remember now, it's important to know the difference between legal and illegal. Go ahead, Eddie. What you want to pull out? Yeah, I think uh, Marion is for me. Marion wrote. Oh, go ahead, Marion. Hi, um, I see you asked what, what you should have done yes. when the person would have brought the funds. Um, mm -hmm. From my experience in tailoring, they would have told us to ask for the source of funds. Um, even if they don't have the source of funds, sometimes they would still say to accept the money. But when you accept Which the money, you have to. Sometimes, no, all times you accept nope, the money. Nope, never my days in the Royal Bank. Never, all never accept money. No, I never accept money. No, no, no. You, so you are doing something wrong if you never accept the money. You must accept the money. You accept must money. then put it on hold and file an and SDR, then, like, a uh, suspicious yeah. transaction report. You don't let the money go back out into the to the no. uh, the world. That, that this is what is called place fund because they placed it into the financial services center. Do you allow right? placing to happen? I confuse. Yes, you, what, you do. You're supposed to. You're supposed to. But you go to your like So you go to your manager and get that get that get that approval. You don't just take it as a teller. Why? Why not? Why not? No. You are no, you no, are no, supposed no, to take it to the. The police now mm. has to investigate. You giving the evidence back? No, you don't give it back. But I just saying, you step away and you tell, you let someone of a higher authority know what's going to happen. Okay, um, okay, yes. Yeah. So you do not. Like it's it's something called tipping off, and so you do not right. report the client. You do not say, um, yeah. no, you will get in trouble for this. No, like that's my car wash guy, and he thought we. I mean, we were cool. He's like Miss Bullet. I know you're proud of me, and I was like, yeah, I proud. And I was saying, oh my god. I have to write this guy up in my head, I, you know? So you take it because you are now going to put it on hold and the FIU is going to use it as evidence, okay? Yes, but what I always also wanted to say was that um, 
I worked on island um, doing tailoring and I would notice that some strange stuff would be going on. But because I guess the people from the island knew the people who was doing the strange activity, nobody ever really um, right. filled so out the form. They, or, right, they turned yeah. blind eye. Yeah, friends, lovers, and family. Mr. Bahamas road, you know, everybody knows somebody. You know, and yeah. so this is what we are trying to eliminate. And so the law has been updated. Once you are onboarded as a new employee, you are to sign that you are aware that you it's against the law to fail to disclose and it's against the law to tip off. And so a lot of people, you know, going on these new jobs and, you know, they give you a bunch of papers the first week that nobody is read and we sign in our life away. Okay, but you can go to jail if you fail to disclose. And like in the real world, like you say, friends, lovers, and family, and they're in reporting, then you have to leave that institution and anonymously report that institution because um, this the Bahamas, like I say, everybody knows somebody. You have to say now, I have to find another job because these people are not complying. So, Ms. Bullard, you're saying to accept the jail. Yes. Sorry, Forbes, go ahead. So, Ms. Bullard. Um, you're saying that in the bank they're supposed to accept the money. Yes. So what do you tell the client? So yeah, what do you tell just, them? Yeah, fine. I tell you, can you declare the source of funds? And he outright tell me he do a drug deal, right? But the, oh. the, a lot of people say, yeah, I coming back. What I coming back in three days and they never come back. You, you see what I mean? And so you are. So what if they do come back? If they so come if back, they then come back the you you write up the forms and you take any information they give you. Sometimes, like I said, it could be legitimate. Legitimate. They could have a relative that left them an inheritance. They could have sold a car or a piece of property. They could have win a number. All these things are legitimate. Okay. Even it, so, so you're saying it's I can agree. So the practice is different. So a person walk in and say, "But I, I just sell some drugs, and I have money from selling some. I used to work the rest union. I owe this money from drugs. You take the money from them. You complete the transaction, and they write up and they put it on hold." Yes, sir. That's what you do. That's what so, I was trying to find out. So even though, yes. okay, if you know that it's dirty and they probably admit it, so yes. what becomes of the money? So then this there should be an internal form, an internal suspicious yeah, transaction report, mm -hmm. report form that you fill out, and then that goes to your MLRO, your money laundering reporting officer. And so he or she will then do an investigation and then file that with the FIU. The FIU will then look at it and turn it over to the police, and then they will advise you when you can release the money or not. So but you tell it. Oh, I, 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 yeah, questions now. So the fella come in Tuesday to drop the drug money off. He comes back Thursday to the same me now as a teller. What am I telling him? It's a whole new system. This is right? what you're telling him. The bank's uh, policy states, and on the back of Royal Bank's um, a, um Oh, what do you call it? The card, the signature card. It mm -hmm. tells you that Royal Bank is allowed to hold this money for three days. Other banks say 30 days. Okay. And you say, this is what our policy says. Or your MLRO will advise you, but it's against the law to tip off. So you cannot say, child, uh, the manager put that on hold or clients have that on hold and they investigate you. You go to jail for that. And that's okay. what it is. I answer, I answer so, that part. So, so, so the customer comes back company, in three days. Yeah, if they come back, your company would have already advised you, and the FIU would already advise you on the next steps to take. FIU works that quickly? Yeah, the, the, they have an online system now. Once they receive that report, or the MLRO will call them on the phone and say, we, the person back to withdraw, what could we do? And they'll say, you could only get, if it was 10,000, they say, give them $200, or give them five, and tell them they have to come back. You have to stall them. You cannot say, Compliance or FIU, are you being investigated? Well, so one last question with this now. I used to work in money transferring them. The same fella come for the drug money. I, I can't take his transaction. Why not? Why, because now I might not complete the transaction because if he no, gives me the you money. No, because you're telling him, yeah, I can send this wire. you telling him I can send this wire, right? And they come in to send a wire, right? But we're asking you know, it was immediate. So as soon as he give me the money, that happened instantly, like seconds. No, it don't later. happen instantly. You let him fill out all the forms. You take the money. You give it to your boy. He don't know what you're doing behind the scenes. Um, just what I'm saying for Western Union, it's about practically speaking up. 
rest unit, you're going to receive this in a transfer assembly, the tracking number. Yeah, but so, then you don't get, you'll say, ask the scanner, this down. You could come back tomorrow to get your receipt. Or we could email practically you speaking, receipt. that's not how rest yeah. unit works. Yeah, but it's that's like, what I said. Listen, each institution, Compliance is everybody's business. You have to come up with a policy. Your institution has to come up with a, a policy on how to store these people. No, I, I hear that, you. I'm asking yeah, so, you. Like, so, no matter what the circumstance is, your institution is required to have a policy in place that tells its staff in the event these things happen, this is what you do, and it has happened. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying they don't have it. You know. So the yeah. policy, so we talked about two different names. The policy was you fill out the SCR, you flag the person so they don't have further transactions done. And you submit the report. So they try to go to a different branch. You know, they don't, Tom can't send money because Tom don't need legal things. And we investigate it. Okay, I'm not asking see, that's now. the thing about it. Be in, be in mind if that one transaction go through. But be in, you know, it ain't going to be no, if you only supposed to be sending $50, we ain't got allowed a ten thousand. We can let you send the same fifty dollars and say, "Well, it was a mistake. We have to resend it next." So, you know, anything not to alarm you. So that's what I'm saying. They don't come to send fifty. The fellow the drugs send a thousand dollars. So I'm so. What I'm saying is, okay, when you open an account, you are required in the financial services sector to know your customer. Okay, the customer produces a profile, just like my car wash guy. I cooperated that he could afford $50 a week. That's why they asked you for your job letter now. Pause you I'm outside, talking about that, you know. No, but when you go outside, your book, most times when SDRs are filed, it's post. Okay? So if one transaction goes through, then fine. But we that'll be our evidence. It can't be 10. It can't be we let you take all the money. You you understand? No, we're talking about two different names. I'm talking about money transfer now. I agree. I understand that because it's a part of behavior for deposits and withdrawals and so forth. And I'm more like money transfer because you say, according to law, they should take the money. So I'm like a money transfer service. Like yeah, so in, if, and if he come to cash West and go. Union a thousand dollars, let him do it. If you have to give him, if your policy says to put it through and post after that transaction, we will let the FIU know that Rodney came in, wanted to send this to Eddie. Eddie received mm -hmm. it. Now Eddie and Rodney will be investigated. That's all. No, That's fine. I, I, I just saying because I, I, I want my application. We didn't take the money, so are you saying we're supposed to take the money? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, you're supposed to take the money. How, how, how else will, will when you tell a customer, uh, we can't send the transaction or whatever. Go back away with the money. Uh, what you could tell them why well, you can't take the transaction? You take it, you process it. Now the police have evidence without that processing. He say, but I never sent no money. And this, I came to the bank to ask a question or to Western Union. I asked them, what if I send a thousand dollars, right? But him sending the actual thousand dollars now gives evidence, correct? So I, I feel like I miss probably misheard it. So he sent because how this how Western Union works. They use to take a ten k transaction and spit it up. So we noticed after like the second, third time. So to your point, we took the first two or three. It's fine. So now it's, for when we file it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it wasn't action quick enough when it came back. Rodney, it's not mm -hmm. exact. You cannot eliminate risk. You can only mitigate it. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the third time we found it or we mm -hmm. saw it and we, in, we intercepted it. And now we have evidence. And now we could give the uh, police sufficient evidence to investigate and go and arrest this person, bring this person before the court. Gotcha. Okay, so don't worry about how much time they do it. The fact that now we have evidence and, and we could stop it, and we are now alerted to this person, they will eventually be stopped. Gotcha. So people have been going on for years and years and years. Let's use um, Elma Campbell. Her son defrauded BPL. Mm -hmm. Now he's on bail for defrauding the Ministry of Terrorism. How? Okay, the minute you was locked up for money laundering and stealing the first time, everybody should have checked their system. Do these people have accounts with us? And 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 double check. I mean, again, there's no way to mitigate. There's only, I mean, there's no way to eliminate. You can only put controls in place to protect your information. You can't eliminate. The hackers and scammers are smarter than us. But we don't want to see people like, um, oh Lord, with the NIGAD, who has a him criminal history dating back to 1970 and nothing was done about it. 1970, it's 2022, the first time he going to jail, 2020, that's ludicrous. Okay? Great point. Okay, great good. Point. good. Eddie, your hand been up. 
You still there, Eddie, or no? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Um, okay. Actually, that was the that was the scenario because uh, I, I know a, a person who who did the same thing, who deposited the money, and then after when he went back to try get the money, they told him that um, they confiscated. Well, they confiscated. They they refused to release the money. Now I, I'm I'm hearing some terms. I'm not familiar too familiar with financial services. I know you were saying that when they, when they come in with the money, when you come to deposit the money, you must have a, a, a declaration of source. Of funds. Okay, right. so what I'm saying is mm -hmm. when you open the account, mm -hmm. you create a profile. Okay, that profile is cooperated by your job letter. Okay. It says you work for government, you get paid once a month, you make $2,000. Okay, so if you make in five deposits a month, where you getting this extra money from and you work for government, government is get paid one, once a month. Where you getting $10,000 to deposit from, you only make 2000 So. At, at the beginning, we verify the information that you give us. Then we put it in a system that will give us alerts if you go outside that profile, okay? What I'm saying is sometimes people are innocent. They go outside their profile because they would have gotten an inheritance. Let's look at Brent Simonet. He disclosed when they won the election that he made his, his income was 50 million. Five years later, he disclosed that he had 150 million Everybody went crazy and said, oh, my God, he ripped off the Bahamian people a $100 million. So he was able to go into the banks and say, this is my mother's will. My mother passed away. She left me $100 million. Wow. Please take my money off hold. Everybody was mad because their mother didn't leave them nothing. And he get $100 million. You will find out how to leave your turn $100 million. Okay, Eddie. So you, you all right. understand? All right. Um. Also, too, I, I heard um someone mentioned a suspicious transaction report. What is that? Right. What? So there are two types of um reports: suspicious transaction and suspicious activity. Your company should have a a software um like Lexus Nexus or World Check that scans names every night, and it'll tell you Eddie just went to jail last night. Right. So that's activity. Transaction means you created a profile, but now you have deposited outside your profile and we can't verify. So if, we, if you cannot disclose the source of funds and say your mother died and left you this $100 million, we'll be putting that on hold and we fill in out a suspicious transaction report and we send in that to the FIU, the Financial Intelligence Unit, who has police officers there that investigate and charge you with money laundering and fraud or tax evasion or whatever, bring you before the courts. Okay. And, okay. To, and to backpedal off the story, what you were saying, um, especially with that story, I think um, with that Emma Calum, I, I think another person would charge too, because I think um, she, they put the money or they transferred the money to her account. Yeah, the girlfriend, but they let her go, Leah. Yeah. They let Leah go. Yeah, because she Because she confirmed that it is uh -huh. and the malice curry again, uh -huh flying around on a private jet riding a bmw and can declare how he, you you call it unexplained but we'll 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 talk about that in chapter eight wow and yeah. then but but she went and but she was the one who was basically drawing the money off right it was transferring to her account and she would go and take the money yeah. off and then yeah but she didn't know you know your boyfriend you're happy your boyfriend gave you one million hundred dollars to go shopping she she they say she was innocent let's hope Okay. She she grew up in church with me, so I'll give her the yeah. benefit of the doubt. Eddie. Well, that's what, yeah, that's alleged. alleged what yeah, I'm it's about. alleged. Yeah, you have okay. to be careful with the say. Okay, let's okay. get the rest of these people. Kenya, go ahead. Kenya, don't say, Miss Bullet, you take too long. Uh, no, I was, we were, when um, Rodney was talking, mm -hmm. I was speaking to the, well, the transferring part of it, that would be another, another step of the, AML, like that would be layering because now you're trying to disguise the, or cover up where this money actually coming from. Right. Yeah. But we still are making sure everybody understands you put the money yeah. in the financial services sector, you place but, it. Uh, That's but with, but with Scotia Bank, um, because we I do do account openings, what and that's what you were speaking to by providing a job letter. So anything outside of that would be considered unusual. And that's where we would be required to file a UTR without a legitimate source of funds. Okay, so tell him what UTR means now, an unusual transaction. Unusual. Some people say unusual, some say suspicious. Right, so, and also, like it's basically anything out of the ordinary, out of, right. your, out of your profile now. Remember, we moved right. into 18 from a rules based approach to a risk based approach. 
So under right. the rules based okay. approach, that was uh, first it was five thousand people bought four ninety nine. Then it was ten thousand. They bought nine ninety nine. Now it's fifteen thousand. They bring in fourteen ninety nine. So that is right. the rules based. No, on tip, risk based. Anything to not tip them off. Right. And with us, we do uh, EMDA expected monthly deposit activity. So if you do to, to, um, make a deposit or make deposit through the ATM, because now we have these smart ATMs where the money don't, where the money is automatically credited. But now mm -hmm. when we into the ATM, we have to put funds on hold until you can provide a source of funds. Yeah, but again, a lot of this is done post. So it does not matter. Just like I was telling Rodney, you could send that 1,000, that ain't no problem. You send it two or three times. But the whole point is that we follow in this person and we follow in the audit trail, we follow in the money to see right. you all involved. Because sometimes they even say, yeah, let them send it, let's see you all involved in this transaction. We lock up all of them. But also um, with us at Social Bank, as, as starting off as a teller, like if you could not declare the funds or if you couldn't provide the source of funds right there and then, we would deny the, um, we would deny the deposit. But, and even with denying the deposit, we still are required to file a report just to say, okay, this person attempted to make this deposit in this amount and it's outside of his activity. So right. even if we don't take it, we still are required to, fo to fo well, um, follow through. Right, but uh, we, the, the regulator has come in when, you know, when we got audited, because I, I worked at primary, my career was at Royal Bank Trust. And they said, listen, people are trying to infiltrate the system. Don't fill out the account opening process so we could give, get as much information about them as possible and keep it on file. You uh -huh. see, in the same way, they say, if they come with the money, take the money. You know what I mean? So let's see who all, if they can send it to Debbie Ann and Bria and Lakeisha, we will lock all of them up. So that's why they moved to taking the money. So you're able to see who all is, you know, connected. Yeah, I, well, I guess that um, every financial institution, yeah, institution is different. Yeah, the Canadian banks are more conservative. They don't right. like the reputational risk. They want to say, they know, don't want to yeah, 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 I understand. Yeah, so um, the Grant? Well, I answered some of my questions um, because I wasn't clear on whether you was telling Rodney to still process the um, transaction. Even though it's a suspicious transaction, you still process it just yes. so you can find out more information. For me. Correct, correct. And like I say, the reporting is done post because a lot of times, you know, the teller doesn't see this up, up front. Like people are doing smurfing. So they go to one branch and they, they deposit 5,000, then another branch and 5,000, another branch. And so compliance don't see that tell. You know, they get a combined report at the end of the week and say, listen, this this person deposited $30,000, you know, to five branches, you know? Okay, so remember, you can't eliminate, you only can mitigate, okay? And what is important is that you, you help uh, the industry keep out the scammers and the money launderers and the terrorist finances, okay? That's what's important. So don't try and catch... You won't catch everyone. We don't live in person. Okay, you do your best. You make sure that you, there's awareness and that for the most part, our persons are compliant. Okay? Okay, um, I'm Bria. Yeah, this is um, piggybacking off of Mr. Bain. Um, what I, I had a just question from what he was saying because I, I was getting from his, um, what I was getting from his questioning was that it seemed as if it was concern for risk for the employee at this point. It's like, well, if I accept in these transactions, you know, at what, what kind of risk I, I created for myself as the employee as well? Like at what point is the company gonna turn around and say, well, you was accepting all of these transactions. So yeah, you reporting it, but then why did you turn around and accept all the transactions? So it's just like, it's just like, at what point as an employee, would I be at risk? Would I be putting myself now at risk by not picking up fast enough on different transactions? Okay, Bria. 
everybody is at risk. Before it used to just be the compliance officer that you'd go to jail. Now everybody goes to jail, okay? And let me tell you how you are not at risk. You are not at risk when the investigators come in and they interview you and you uh -huh. can explain what your job description says, okay? You are not at risk when you say that this is what the regulator says. Because if there's a gap in your policy and you are not aware that there's a gap in your policy, then you could be fined for negligence, okay? Right. So therefore, I encourage you to read your policy and procedures applicable mm -hmm. to your function, see what your regulator says, mm -hmm. tell your compliance department or your manager that there's a gap in our policy and it needs to be updated. Let them know that the system isn't functioning properly um, mm -hmm. and be aware. People go to jail because they cannot explain what your job function is. Right. They cannot, they never read the policy. Right. Okay. So we don't live in perfect. The hackers and scammers are smarter than us. Your institution will be infiltrated. You know, other like right. Atlantis, Atlantis front desk was hacked. So Scotiabank employees was in trouble because they had to explain how, you know, what does the system do to protect people from on Atlantis front desk when they scan their, their um, card? Who is in charge? Who manning it, right? So once you know your customer, that's the first thing. You are required to know your customer. You are required to know the policy and they could confirm that you followed policy and you was not negligent. Right. You don't go to jail. But if you say, well, I don't really know, but my, my supervisors do it that way. And I, I sure that's how I get three. And that, then you go to jail because you're negligent. Yeah. Right, okay? right. Right. So that's what makes the difference. Know your policy, know your job description. If there's a gap, identify it. Mm -hmm. There's a series that I want y'all to watch. It's called Dirty Money. There are two cases. Um, Volkswagen got a new system and they was able to defraud the world based on that new system with their emissions tax. So you all look for dirty money, Volkswagen, Volkswagen emissions tax. And then you all look for, um, or I, I think it calls drug cartel, dirty money drug cartel where Mexican drug lords and HSBC. And again, all of this is awareness training. It'll give you an eye opener that all these policies and procedures are for uh, animal farm type of situation. All of us are equal, but some of us are more equal than others, okay? Because yeah. people just have a heart attack over policy and over systems. So watch those and they will give you an, an eye opener, okay? Because with, they had a HSBC had a lot of Mexican drug lords in their system, and they had their names hyphenated and with a full stop, or you know these married titles where you can't just call Robin McPhee. You have to say Robin McPhee Solomon, or she mad, you know. So the system can pull up hyphens and full stops and all these things. So all those things, you all watch that, and next week we'll come back and discuss that. Okay. Okay, Thurston, go ahead. Uh, good morning. Um, I guess for the persons in the banking institutions, um, I just wanted to know what would be a number amount that would be considered a red flag, um, maybe in a scenario of this. Uh, so someone comes into the bank, known to the bank to be in good standing, um, so you have your KYC in place for them, but they present to you um, let's say $1,200. Um, so okay. we, we may okay. consider Nikisha, it a smaller amount. Nikisha, there's, yes. the number of amounts were under the rules-based approach. We are now under the risk-based approach. So everybody is required to know their customer. So when you come into the bank, we have to corroborate your information, which means we have to ensure that what you say on paper makes sense. And that's where I use the example. If you work for government and you get paid once a month and you say, I want to open an account and deposit four times a month, we have to say, Lakeisha, you work for government. That don't make sense. Do you have another source of income? Okay. And so then you if you say no, below. if you say no, then we say you can't deposit four times a month if you don't have another source of income. Are you going to break up your pay and come every week? Okay, so Ms. Bullard, let me let me finish my scenario and then because uh -huh. this is what I'm really saying here. Okay, okay so 
the bank knows the client. They, as far as they're concerned, they know what this person, what the income is, all of this stuff. Right, but right, they happen right. to walk into the bank with $1,200 um, for a transaction just as a deposit, right? Mm -hmm. um, they make that deposit and then they come back the next day. They make another 1200 deposit. And then probably, let's say four times in within the week, they come and they make a 1200 Now, is that considered a red flag? And then when they're asked, well, okay, to declare this um, source of income, they say something like, oh, I'm collecting rent. Uh, let, let's say for my sister who's out of town, um, for her units, and they present just a generic food store receipt book. Would something like that raise a red flag? And, and how, how would that be dealt with? First thing, again, that's when you deposit small amounts, that, that's called smurfing. The next thing is the red flag depends on the profile you establish when you open the account, okay? But like I say, people have legitimate reasons. Like you say, your sister could have gone out of town and you could produce those receipts. If we, we are supposed to know you and we should say, man, Tyson didn't get no sister that have no apartments to rent. You know, these things that we could verify or you bring a, 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 a receipt, then we say, give us a copy of your sister's conveyance that shows that she wants a triplex. You know, I think, you that, I think that's all I wanted to hear. Like, do yeah. you have to go to the extent then of it, not just using that receipt, but having to now prove that your sister does indeed have right. um, these things and, and, you know, causing all of this other information to have to be produced. That's, I think that was what I wanted to hear. Right. So like I say, it, it just depends on the institution. The Canadian banks tend to be more conservative. If you go to Bank of the Bahamas or Commonwealth, they may not ask, but Royal and Scotia, they tend to be more conservative, conservative and they do more balances and checks. Okay. So it depends on the institution. Okay. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So we would have verified to your income at account opening. And so if you go outside that, that um, account, that, that amount that we verified, then yes, that's suspicious. We have, we say Thurston can go over 20%. If your salary is 2000 an amount, you start bringing 5,000 every month. Then yeah, that's suspicious. You see $50, no being a question. But a thousand more, yeah, because it's better than getting this money from. So that suspicion, there's no amount. It's applicable based on your profile. Anything outside of your profile that was verified makes you suspicious. Okay. Okay, guys. So we just covered placement, but do we understand that deposit into the financial service sector is the placement? Okay, and like I say, each one of us have um, like that car wash guy outside. We only call him an alias. We don't know his name, right? And if the Securities Commission had Googled, or uh, had known the government name and Google it, they would have known that that person was out on bail for robbing a bank already. I doubt they would have let them, that person open that car wash at the, at the regulator for the securities industry. Okay, so I'm just telling you all, all the people who are accessing the cleaners, you know, there's a clear desk policy, make sure you shred everything. Uh, it's very real. These hackers and scammers, they are very savvy. Their job was be overwhelmed and overworked. Their job all day is to learn how to infiltrate the system. So don't worry so much if your system is infiltrated. You need to know the controls that protect your system. You need to understand that they work. They need to be tested to make sure that if I scan my card at, 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 at Atlantis front desk, people ain't gonna be able to duplicate it. Okay, so placement. Okay, um, in the offshore world is where you most of the time see um, integration because now they create a complex web of transactions because they know that somebody tracking them or they know that this dirty money. So they send, so, oh, I want one wire to Debbie Ann Miss Bullet, one wire to Rodney, one to Edney, one to this company. And so a complex web of transaction, they trying to, you know, uh, diminish the audit trail. Okay. And so that's um, layering. And then because they don't send Eddie this money and Rodney was waiting on this, Rodney goes right out and pays his light bill. 
So now there's legitimate money into BPL and then BPL go and deposit that money. Okay, so they call it a washing of the money. Okay, so do we understand how the money is washed? Oh my God, Ooh. that person okay? I hope so, that's a yes, I don't know. That's a horror movie. you okay? Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, please, please be careful, please be careful. Yeah, I don't like this driving and trying to pay attention to you. Please, please, yes, be careful. Yeah, organize yourself so you have some uninterrupted time. Yeah, okay, so that's the washing of the money. And that's the three stages of money laundering. Placement, layering, integration. Okay, and so the book has a lot of examples and um, yeah, y'all could go online and get more in depth, but just to give you some ideas on, on what happens and how the process works, okay? The next important thing out of um, chapter one is the crimes and the money laundering. So after, like I said, before 218, money laundering was not a predicate crime on the books of the Bahamas. So persons were charged with fraud or stealing by reason of employment, however, now is char charged with fraud and money laundering, stealing by reason of employment and money laundering. And when they used to drag the people before the courts or on the TV, we used to hear it a lot, but now they stopped doing that. And so there are 21 crimes um, under money laundering. And so these crimes include tax evasion, fraud, um, smuggling, human trafficking, we saw that 17 people died the other day. They announced the name. They said that this person had been um, arrested before. They said that they found $45,000 at home and they think that the man had $90,000. Was that other $45,000 in the financial services sector somewhere? So this is why we read the newspaper. And when the newspaper printed, who was alleged to be this, you know, the person driving the boat, they should have gone to their systems and checked. Does Ms. Bullet have a system? She was driving this boat, smuggling these people. Does she have an account with us? And if she does, then come, let's go report this to the FIU, get this person, get this money on hold and get this out of the financial service sector, okay? Another scenario is that I have persons that work in the casinos and they have said that Miss Bullet, you know, two o'clock in the morning, we have these big poker players and these girls are incoherent, you know? And I said, but, you know, tell your compliance officer. And they say, mom, Miss Bullet, we in, you know, they watching the money, so they should be able to watch. I said, these girls could be human traffic or human smuggled. And, and y'all are on the front line. There's three lines of defense. The first line is the front line and the managers. The second line is compliance. The third line is, audit if we don't work together and ensure that compliance is everybody's business you can cap you know human smuggling so uh, you know i encouraged him i said put a anonymous uh uh thing in the box to compliance and tell compliance come down there three o'clock in the morning and watch or look at the videos and see if you need to file a uh, you know a suspicious activity report have the police come and check that these girls if they can't even order a drink and they just stare and they obviously drug, you know, somebody needs to look into that. All right, so it has to be everybody's business. Um, go ahead, Ferguson. I don't know if Debbie Ann and Eddie still have questions. Their hands are raised. But yes. Ferguson, go ahead. Ms. Bullard, um, sorry I sound like this, but I have a flu. Okay. Um, going back to the three stages, like we spend a lot of time in the gaming houses and as a gaming board inspector we have um we have incidences where you have persons um depositing x amount of money to their account sometimes monies are being transferred when they're not supposed to but they don't rate us because they don't tell us anything like so like they're supposed to, they don't report to the gaming board what's really happening. So do you think um, <clears throat> the uh, gaming board needs to put more penalties or 
what have I want. You done, have you done training as yet? This is yeah. my first. This is my first. I'm in regulatory compliance. No, no. Have you done training for the industry as yet? Because you can't just start off with penalties. You have to, and, and, and let me tell you, um, it takes two or three years to, to get these policy in place because no um, first you have to write the policy, then you have to train the people. And sometimes you have to hire the people to train the people, right? So, yeah. so write out a plan and say, this is our plan. We are going to go to the industry and then we're going to, they're going to be on a learning curve on what to look out for. And then say one year after we're going to check sustainability that they understand what we say and they are looking out and we are getting in some reports. And then probably year three, after you see that they just ain't paying attention, then you implement facts. But you have to go through the process or you'll get a, a lot of backlash <coughs> if, you, if you don't do it properly. Okay. Okay, so training first. Training for your inspectors, then for them to train the industry, then sufficient time to hire people to enforce, and then, then you find should be last. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Eddie, you have a question or no? Your hand just is there. No, no, I, I had a question. <laughs> <laughs> I put it down. Um, could you briefly, um, um, you know, you talk about layering. Um, what was, uh, could you give another example you say of layering would be um, if, uh, uh, what would be another example of layering? Okay, so uh, just me creating a web of transaction mm -hmm. to diminish the audit trail. So when the police start their investigation, it's hard to see exactly where all this money gone to. So it's hard to see that Eddie gets some, Kenya gets some, Solomon gets some, Robin gets some. You, you, you see what I mean? And then you got to investigate those four to see, was this just a school fee they paid or was this person linked to the drug deal? You see okay, what I mean? So that would be the, the transferring of the money. So I'll say yeah. I transfer one to this person and transfer some money to the next person. Right. Um, that would, be, would, would therefore be layering. Right. But, and, and you're saying some are paying bills or pay people to pay Yeah, uh, so when, when Rodney goes to pay his BPL, that money bill is now deposited to BPL because they accepted it. They didn't know nothing would happen. And now it's back into the community. So it's okay. integrated back into the community as clean money. Okay. Not, not to delve back into politics, but um, recently with the case of Shane Gibson, right? Mm -hmm. When it said that he got the shingle money and they put the... Um, I guess the person who got the contract then when the and I guess deducted the money off their account and then I guess they put it in a brown bag allegedly and they dropped it off I guess to some back alley that there would be an example of layering as well too right yeah because they tried to diminish exactly the passing of the money to Mr. Gibson right because so he... I'm upsetting these PLPs oh. <laughs> Shane Gibson ain't do nothing to stop they born. He brings Shane Gibson in this conversation for no reason. Shane Gibson is in his house and I think he's doing nothing. And this the gentleman who <laughs> says he's not political. Mr. Gibson. And he finally you know, is. You don't have to be political, but you can put right there, right it is. They made a mockery of the Bahamas government because that was not Shane's first rodeo. Okay? He was in a lot of other uh, corruption and bribery. And he won on a technicality. You don't pay people <laughs> reputational risk when they win on technicalities. He made a mockery of the government and a mockery of the baby. Okay. Eddie, so you got a bond. So give me a P, give me an FNM, give me FNM reference, Eddie. Bought it to the same thing. Okay, Adrian Gibson. This is a legend now. Yeah, this is a legend. You want to say legend with you? Yeah. <laughs> if, if he wins on a technicality, you don't get paid. If you right. are proven innocent, you get paid. Not it's a technicality. That's yeah, because I think kind of waste of the, the, people's money. The, the allegations are that um, I guess they got some contracts which he used his position to get the con to secure the contract. Which, which all of them do. Right. Which and then the do. contract was awarded to a company that he had interest in. And I think the money then was passed um, from that company. Um, I guess whoever the prince, the directors, where they went and took the money off, and then they either transferred it. Well, they wouldn't transfer this account, but it was 
layered, layered with, in, in such a way where they took it off and I guess they, they give him the money and then he had to find some other means of then depositing that money and it, it was clandestine to um, real estate purchases and some other. Right. 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 So it, it, it's a whole web. Yeah. I guess a, yeah. a real so web. You cannot follow the yard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So the All right. So, so I'm that. balanced. I'm balanced now, right? Completely, completely. Yeah. No, because no. you say a ledger with him and Shane Gibson, you say you watch him drop the bag. Send him all to jail. Send him all to jail. Send him all to jail. Okay, but only poor people is go to jail. Rich people don't go to jail. So make sure you all have five revenue streams. So first, your yeah, nine to five is only... Hello? We got, we got Shane Gibson got a whole electricity again. <laughs> <laughs> She's a double oh. dancing Molinex. <laughs> oh, Lord, listen to me. Wait, wait. It's going off again, eh? DPL? Yeah, she's going to say something she ain't supposed to say. That's all I tell The Holy Spirit that I'm so broken. I hope she remember it, because I've eaten. Hmm. <laughs> so. I ain't getting none of that money, so I'll just listen. Okay. Eddie Costa. Yes, he did. No more talking, Eddie. You're not allowed. Eddie, move your mic now for the rest of the class. <laughs> we can run in the next election. Sorry again, Robin. You gotta go get the money back from BPL because this is the second time for the day. I I sorry about that. Yeah, you all there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask for refund. <laughs> Ask for refund. This is the second time for the day. But anyway, I'm glad oh, this one's happening to me and nobody else. But it, it, <laughs> it's recorded if you miss anything. Okay. Yeah. So what I was saying, make sure you have your five revenue streams. Okay, and make sure you build up your network. And I I suggest. That the if you hang out with four five people on the weekends for three weekends you party one weekend you brainstorm think about how to make this money the Chinese just live on twenty percent and they save eighty percent so try to do that one week um try to invest and try to help the government and then go go globally a lot of help needed in this country okay so just organize yourselves to make some time to build the network and it seems like a lot of uh, influential, educated persons are here just from the discussion. So it's a, a good place to start to, to network. Make sure by the end of the five weeks, everybody know everybody. Okay? Okay. Okay, good. So we understand that there are 21 crimes on the money laundering, the tax evasion, the smuggling. We understand if we work in the financial services sector, you can't just say that's compliance job. Everybody is business. Come Come together and assist to ensure that the uh, financial services sector remains compliant. Okay. Um, the next thing is there's a comparison, I think it's on about page 24 or 25 about terrorist financing versus um, anti money laundering. And it, it, it just shows the difference between the two. Whereas, do we see that chart? They'll be, they'll be turning our books. Yeah. Look at the BPL truck drive past. Hello. I heard it. I I heard it. Light on. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. I BPL just drive past, but they they turned it back on. Like okay. I can try to get back on that. Yeah. Yeah. You all you all yeah. see that on page 24, 25? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Let me tell you, the placement question is popular on the exam. And of course, you describe the three stages of money laundering, how the money is washed. And then you give a little example, like my car wash guy. Um, yeah, and you should get about, you know, you know, or you could give two examples if you need to make up the words. Then um, the next very popular question on the exam, it asks you about crimes um, under... 
money laundering. One is counterfeiting. And so you would explain what the definition of counterfeiting is. And then, of course, we know a case, a very popular case related to counterfeiting is the George Floyd case. Because he essentially went in and was a, a presumed to have a $20 counterfeit note, and that escalated into his death. That's All right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you answer that question. And then this question is, you know, a compare and contrast normally between terrorist financing and money laundering. And of course, um, we know that money laundering is profit motivated and terrorist financing is ideological. If, if somebody come and tell us, don't listen to Billy Graham or T.D. Jakes, we say you are going straight to hell. So the same way they are raised to be martyrs and they suicide bombers and they believe that if they die for their country, they will go for Islam, they will go to heaven and have streets of gold and all sorts of glorious things, okay? So it's ideological. So that's a good chart to study as well. Okay, um, are there any questions about chapter one? No. No, we good? Every, everybody, we all on the same page? Yeah, no questions, sir. Okay. Same page. Okay, good, good. Okay, Miss Miss Bullitt done talk too much, so now I need a volunteer. Who, who's going to be Ms. Um, Bullitt's volunteer for, for chapter two? We're going to read, we're going to turn in our books all the way to the back of to case four and we need to read how terrorists finance their activities. Okay. Boy, not everybody all at once. I, I, I can read. read. Some of y'all put your hands down. <laughs> no, no volunteers, not one. No, I volunteer. I said I roll Thank you, Kenya Rowell. Okay, Kenya, Kenya will read. And we just want to read like the beginning and uh, the, the first page and, and Kenya will read that for us. But let me just give you an overview. Um, do, did we sign it at the back? Is it case four? It says it started with G20 countries meeting. We see that? Um, I see how terrorist funds, how to stop them. How, how they fund their activities. Yeah, yeah. and how to stop them. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. All right, um, so let me just give you an overview. So, um, uh, of course, we know um, everybody's familiar with 9-11. Um, does everybody know that the terrorists landed in Freeport? No. No. Okay. 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 2001. To, back in 2001, um, on September 11, two of the terrorists that presumed to fly into the White House landed into Freeport. And luckily, our immigration department was vigilant. And this was just one year after people even started talking about terrorism and compliance and what have you. And those um, immigration officers were vigilant because the terrorists did not have the proper visa and so they say, uh-uh, y'all go right back on the plane, but y'all come back on. We cannot let you into the country. Because if that plane was able to leave from Freeport and fly into the White House, but we would still been suffering as a country, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, the Bahamas has like five international airports in San Salvador and Elutra and Exuma and all over. So... Um, we have to make sure that we have the right people. Even I had some customs officers in the class. We have to make sure that the right people are stationed um, at these locations and um, they know what to look out for, okay? So terrorism is a problem in the Bahamas. That's international. Now, we always pay attention on international terrorism, but domestic terrorism is a very big problem in the Bahamas. Um, we had a shooting at a baby shower where 13 persons were shot. Luckily, nobody died. We had the Fox Hill Park shootout where eight persons died. And most recently, we had a shooting on Jerome Avenue where six persons died. Okay, so Ms. Bullitt wants us to be able to be aware of what's happening in our little Bahamas. So our terrorism is more gang related, right? And I'm paying attention to this because 
back in 2009 in America, there were 365 cases of domestic terrorism. And of course, you know, um, they say you only have to, America sneezes and we get the flu, right? So we want to ensure that there's no sneezing going on and we catch no flu, okay? So please pay attention to these gangs, make sure that they're infiltrating our system, um, make sure that there's an awareness, okay? So um, the question on the second question on the homework, it asks you how do terrorists finance their objectives? And normally we are gonna read ways in which terrorists make their money um, their objectives are travel, safe havens, um, recruitment, they need weapons, um, and so they do all sorts of things. So Roll is going to read for us, and we're going to find out exactly what they do to make this money, okay? I want to bring your attention to, to Bin Laden, Bin Laden, who was blamed for the September 11 massacre. Um, he lived for 10 years after you know that occurred and he couldn't have been working a nine to five he might have had some investments but they had to be pretty good but he also needed insulin every day and so i just want to show you all how strong our network is and you know we want to build a strong network but we want to use it for our good because obviously persons protected him obviously um they had a lot of money and, and they supported his ideologies, okay? So make sure y'all y'all build that strong network. He lived comfortably with wives. I showed him he didn't take and lobsters every day. He got his insulin with no problem. And, and he was fine for 10 whole years. And I just always think about Miss Bullard. I say, if I lose my job and I tell my mommy I have to move home with my husbands and my concubines and my 25 children, she, first, she asked me if I'm crazy. And I'm going to be living comfortably every day. She asked me if I find a job yet and why I'm still in the house. You know, and she loved me. So, so I just want to know how Ben Laden was able to do it. Okay, so let's read. Let's read. Okay, so I just want you all to think about all of that and let's read. Okay? Okay. Okay, good. And I Miss Bullock is try to switch over. Start now? Yes, please. The Global Terrorism. Read the first two pages, yes. The Global Terrorism Index 2017 was released this week. The number of terrorism deaths globally has declined for the second consecutive year, reveals the report, which is produced by the Institute, of, Institute for Economics and Peace. But in developed nations, deaths have increased and terrorism has spread to more countries. In part, this reflects the changing dynamics of terrorism as witnessed in the developed world. From high intensity sophisticated attacks to more low tech, low cost, and lone actor, lone actor attacks. Such a shift in tactics mimics the evolution in terrorism, funding and highlights the needs to consider longer term strategies to inhibit the rise of terrorism. In 2016, ISIL was the world's healthiest terrorist group. Its revenue, according to the Global Terrorism Index, peaked at $2 billion in 2015, which is equivalent to the GDP of some small nations. However, as the loss of its self-proclaimed caliphate has shown, the group's strategy of self-funding and controlled territory has left susceptible to any action that impacts on its territory. During the last year, ISIL's funding structure has caved following major territorial losses in Iraq and Syria, as half of its funds were sourced from smuggling. ISIL was producing up to 75,000 barrels per day and generating revenues of $1,000 per day. In response, the 68-member Global Coalition has targeted ISIL's revenue sources. By early 2017, more than 2,600 oil extraction, refinement, and sales sites. Cash storage sites were all targeted, directly hindering ISIL's ability to pay fighters and provide basic services. The Iraqi government has also 
banking systems within ISIL controlled territory to restrict payments to government workers in these areas. With the continuing loss of territory in 2017, it's estimated ISIL's revenue has fallen from 81 million per month to in 2015, million per month in 2017. It is highly likely its revenue will decline further. This disruption to ISIL's fundraising has, question, has unquestionably helped thwart the activities of, especially in its base countries of Iraq and Syria. However, the threat posed by the groups remains, particularly in light of the trend towards more local attacks. In September, the September 11 attacks were highly complicated in their planning and implementation. Al Qaeda planned the attacks over many months and trained multiple perpetrators to carry out specific tasks. The attacks required substantial financing, with estimates varying between 400,000 and 500,000. In stark, in stark contrast, the, 20, the 2004 Madrid train bombings were estimated to have cost $10,000. The failed 2007 London car bomb attacks carried an estimate price tag of about 14,000. The foil commuter train attacks in Germany, in Germany's Cologne in 2006 was estimated to have cost only $500. The more recent attacks using vehicles such as the 2016 night truck attack was similar, similarly inexpensive to conduct. The shifts towards that's a shift in a study of 40 terrorist cells that plotted out, plotted or carried out attacks in Western Europe between 1994 and 2013 found that most plots were self-funded. Furthermore, three quarters of terror attacks in Europe between 1994 and 2013 cost less than $10,000. This estimate includes all costs associated with the attack, such as travel, communication, storage, firing of weapons, and bomb-making materials. Okay, so does that tell us uh, about how much these attacks cost and why they are affordable? Yes. Okay, okay, and again, again, it's just an eye opener. You can read some more in um, chapter two about the various objectives, the funding, what they do, why they do it and how they do it, okay? So, um, Please take some time and, and, and read chapter two and, and we'll pick it up next because we are at a very lengthy discussion and I'm very pleased that everybody was involved. So um, just please um, let me know next week if you have questions or concerns or you know if I don't wanna you know, message overload you, but um, that is basically what we will cover for chapter one and chapter two, okay? And so since this is our first week, I want everybody to take some time and um, go through what we discussed and, and then come back refresh next week and, and we will discuss in, any questions or uncertainties that you may have. Okay? Go ahead, Trevor. Ms. Bullen, I know earlier you mentioned um, people who hadn't passed the class before. In cases like that, um, do they, we take the whole class or just pay the no, exam? Just the exam, it's a $200 fee, but don't worry about that at this point. Everybody should be successful. If we all hang in there and stick with it, we, we should be successful. So yeah, it's $200 just for a retake for okay. the exam. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, you're welcome. Hi, Ms. Ballard, um, I don't wanna take too much more time, but I did want to ask in reference to the ISIL um, able to basically steal oil and then resell it. Who, who are they selling to that didn't ask any questions on where this terrorist group was getting? <laughs> exactly why the gas and oil thing, um, industry needs to be regulated and, 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 and they need some compliance officers. That's right. our exact thing, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, like I say, if somebody told you not to believe in Billy Graham and, and T.D. Jakes, you would question them. So they are, they believe in um, all that they are doing, uh, you know, they believe that America is Babylon and 
America right. come to kill and take over and all sorts of stuff like that. So because of their ideology, they support all this nonsense. Right. It's nonsense to us, but what they grew up on being taught. You know, I'm a different sorry. religion. Have the resources to provide funding to these organizations. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I want you all to watch Dirty Money. I want you all to come back with some awareness. Read over chapters one and two, and, and then we'll pick it up again next week. Okay? Where would you find this movie? That's right. Uh, it's Net on Netflix. And if I don't have Netflix? Go to YouTube and see if they can sneak it to you. Oops. I have Netflix. Or <laughs> free movie so. Yeah. Okay, guys. So we'll stop right there and we'll pick up all the questions and concerns next week. Okay. All right. Okay, right, guys. Have, okay, enjoy bye. your holidays. The holiday okay. weekend. Enjoy it. I'll see you all next week. Okay, guys. I'll be safe. Okay, bye. Okay. Ms. Bolares?